Hello, my front end friends. Lately on my newsletter and on social media, I've been talking a lot about how you can make your work stand out from the crowd. And today I wanted to show an example of how we can do that by taking a single page front end mentor project or challenge that they've uh, given us and actually doing a lot more with it, turning it into a multi-page design powered by a headless CMS. So we're gonna start by taking the design, analyzing it, figure out what's going on and the best way to approach things. Then we're going to build it all out with Astro and then we're gonna connect it to Wix Studio's headless CMS to make it painless to add new posts. So if that sounds good to you, well then you're in the right place because we're about to get started with it. And what you'd wanna do is get into Front End Mentor. The project here will be linked down in the description if you do wanna follow along and you find the challenge, you go to the challenge hub and you can download the starter, which I've already gotten. I'm not going to be working out of the starter file and I can say I've already, it just gives you a zip file. I've already extracted the files from there. Uh, I just wanna have the style guide, the design and the assets. And then once I've got my project set up, I'll be taking those and copying them over into my folder. Just really quickly here though, if we go and take a look in the design, they do give us a few different versions. So we have uh, we'll open up that file. So we have the desktop design right here. Then we have the active states. So like when we're hovering on top, we can see what's links and the way the colors change on those. Then we also have the mobile design as well, where everything stacks as you might expect. And we have when the navigation is opened as well. So quite a few different things that we're gonna have to build out. So we're gonna get all of that working and, and talking a little bit about, you know, approaching this design with components in mind, rather than just making a single grid and placing everything where it needs to go. Cause that's definitely the easiest way to create this type of layout. But once you start having dynamic content and thinking about how I can work with components, it gets a little bit trickier. And for the CSS itself, I will be using quite a lot of modern CSS along the way. So we can sort of have some fun with that. And uh, I'm not gonna be worrying too much about browser support. If there's any features that I use along the way that you're not too sure about, just check caniuse.com and you can see what the browser support for it is. But for personal projects like this or things where we're just building something that you know, to put in your portfolio or just as an exercise to play with, I think that's the best time to play with modern CSS. And then of course we only have this one design right now and we're gonna want this to be a multi-page site where every one of these blog posts is going to have its own page as well. So we'll have to worry about designing that a little bit later, but we'll keep that relatively simple uh, just so we don't break our heads around the design side too, too much. And that's usually a good thing to do if you're not a designer is to keep the designs relatively simple. So for now, we'll move that out of the way and we'll uh, move, you know, we have our assets just really fast here. We do have images and fonts. So we'll look at using font face as well uh, along the way here, but we wanna get started. So what I'm gonna do is actually go over to the scary world of the command line. Now, if you've never used the command line before, you probably don't have Node or NPM installed on your computer. So I'd recommend that you check out a video. The card should be popping up, up there somewhere or there will be a link for it down below called NPM for Absolute Beginners, where I look at how you can get started using NPM and some of the basics of using the command line here. It's really not complicated. We're not doing anything too crazy. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to do is CD on over to my desktop so we can work off of my desktop where I like to keep my active projects. And then I'm gonna do an NPM space, create space, <laughs> astro at latest space, and I'm gonna put the project name that I want. This would be the folder that would be on my desktop where this project is gonna live. So I'm gonna do front end mentor or FEM for front end mentor. And I think this is gonna end up under my head. So we'll move out of the way and we'll go in with a blog with CMS. But of course, call this project whatever you wanna call it. And I'm gonna hit return and get to enjoy Astro's fantastic command line tool thingy here where we can start a project. Uh, the first thing it asks us is do we wanna include the sample files, the blog template, or go empty. We're building a blog. You might be tempted to do the blog template, but that comes with a lot of designs and other stuff pre-done for us that we don't want. So I'm gonna go with an empty project. It's a one-man project. It's relatively small. I'm not going to plan to use TypeScript for this. It comes with Astro anyway, so you'd be able to do it. Uh, but I'm gonna say no for now. If you're working and practicing TypeScript, it'd be a good time to also include it if you'd like to. And do we want to install the dependencies? Of course we want to install the dependencies. So I'm gonna select Yes, and initialize a new Git repository, we might as well. So with that done, we can see that it is initializing the project. This shouldn't take too long to do, but it does take a little bit of time. So I'm just gonna skip ahead and tell when it's done. With the installation done, I'm just going to do a CD into my FEM blog with CMS. 
go into that project. And then from there, I could start the dev server up here and just leave that running in the command prompt or whatever terminal that you happen to be using. It's up to you. Uh, but instead of that, I'm going to write code and put a period. And what that's going to do is actually open it up in VS Code, which is obviously super handy uh, for what we're doing here. And you can see here is our project in VS Code, which is awesome. Uh, if you're using a different editor, just make sure you open the folder in your editor of choice. And just really quickly here, if you haven't used Astro before, when we choose that empty template, it is very empty. We don't have very much in here. We have a very basic package.json. We're going to be using our uh, dev script here and eventually our build script, uh, but not too much else. Uh, you can see the only dependency right now is Astro that's in there. So nothing too much to worry about in our package. If we look, we have a source and a public. Public is for static assets like our images and our fonts, things that never change. So we're going to bring those over in a second. And then if we look in our source, the only thing we have right now is this index.astro page, which looks like this, really nothing too, too complicated. Uh, then we're going to be taking this and actually turning it into a layout template that we're going to be using for our pages. If we were just doing the single page design, that wouldn't really be necessary. But since we are going to be adding a little bit more here, I do think it eventually it does make sense to turn this into a layout so we can use the base of this for our blog posts as well. Before we go any further, I do want to mention you'll see the little Astro icon next to my .astro file here. If you haven't already installed the Astro extension, I would encourage you to do so. You can find it and just search the extensions marketplace for Astro right there and install it. It's going to help with your syntax highlighting and just code formatting and all the other things. Also finding and importing files, it makes everything a little bit easier. So definitely grab that Astro extension if you are using Astro. Uh, but let's jump back over to our files here. And what I'm gonna do is when we had, we'd mentioned here, this is my project files from before. If we go back, we can see the, we have all of our things. So I'm just going into my, or actually, uh, so I'm just going to go into my assets and my images and fonts. I'm going to grab both of those files or folders, I should say. And I want to bring those both into my public. So I just drag and drop it nice and easy, just like that. So it just copies them over. We can see I have my fonts here. Uh, we can use the, the regular ones or we're going to use the variable font because it makes it a little bit more interesting. <laughs> and well, not really, but it just makes it easier, I guess. Uh, and of course we have our images. The other thing that we're going to do here though, is I did mention that I do like having a few other things in my project. So I'm gonna grab the design and the style guide here, and I'm just gonna drag those into the root of the project just so I have access to them. And I want to copy, I'm getting this like warning, do I wanna copy a folder or add it to the workspace? I'm gonna copy the folder over so it duplicates it into this project. I have my design that's right here, just so it makes it easy. I can click and like see them in VS Code if I need to at any points. Uh, which can be handy. And then we also have that style guide that's coming here. I don't know if we're actually gonna use it, but I like having it just for sometimes for the colors and the font sizes, and you can see the, the, the font family and the other stuff that we need right there. So it can be handy just to have it all in one place. Awesome, so let's jump on over to this index and actually get started on this. If you're not used to Astro, one thing you will also notice at the top here, we have this, which is a code fence. It's basically like front matter. So we can actually do some, some things up there. Though at the moment, we're not going to do anything too complicated uh, other than let's get this project up and running in our dev server. So uh, right here, let me just make sure that I'm not in the way once again. And we can do an npm run dev to launch the dev server. And in VS Code anyway, you can do a control and then click on the uh, URL there and it will open it in the browser for you. If you're on a Mac, I don't know if it's gonna be control or command. And if we do that, we're gonna see we have this fantastic site that just says Astro on it and has nothing else. <laughs> but what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that up on the side there and let's move VS Code on over to right here. Awesome, so at least now we can see what we're doing and we're gonna do, let's come right here and let's just start by the really simple thing. We're gonna say const uh, title is going to be equal to uh, front end mentor blog with CMS. So nothing too complicated there, but then we can come here is actually put in these curly braces and then just put title. And then I could also come here and put title and hit save. And you can see the front end mentor blog with CMS is coming in. So this can make life a little bit easier. Uh, just if you have a title that should be across all pages or you wanna be able to make easy changes to them, you can. Though what we're going to do in this situation is I'm actually going to copy everything we see here and I'm going to create a new file. So here in my source folder, Let's make a new folder called layouts. And in my layouts, I'm gonna make a new one called capital P primary layout.astro. 
And layouts with Aster are just a type of component. We just put it in a layouts folder to make it more obvious that it's a layout. And I'm going to paste this in right here. The only difference though is I'm going to take this H1 off of here. And instead of that, we're going to come here and we're going to put a slot. And if I hit save, oh, it doesn't. If you want slot, we can also do it as a self-closing tag right there. And we're going to go back over to my index right here. And I'm going to delete all of that. And I'm going to come up over to here and I'm going to do an import primary layout from, and sometimes you get some autocomplete here that will help you, but it doesn't want to do it in this case. So that's okay. We're going to go back a step, go to my layouts. And then in my layouts, we can grab my primary layout.astro. And then what we can do is primary layout. And what the reason I put a slot here in the primary layout is anything I put here will get inserted into that and it's using that primary layout as a template. So let's just say hello there and hit save. And if we come take a look, uh, we might need to refresh because we got rid of the body. There we go, we can see a hello there. Maybe we could put that for now uh, inside uh, an H1. So we can just move that on into there, hit save, and now it's a little bit bigger. Perfect, <laughs> cool, right? Uh, one other thing that could be useful at the same time is if we had this title that's not actually being used right now. If we wanted to, we could actually pass the title through still, uh, even though we can't see it. If I move this down, uh, you'll see the tab at the top. It has the front end mentor blog with CMS and you might want to change what that's saying, right? So one page might have a different title than another page. And so what we can do is instead of saying it's this, we're going to delete that and we're going to wrap this in curly braces because we have to deconstruct it from our astro astro.props. And if I hit save now and we can take a look again, it's just saying localhost, there's not actually a title on it because we aren't passing any props through. If you're not sure what a prop is, it's just basically like an attribute that we can pass from when we use the component into the component itself. So in my index here, I could say that title, title is equal to homepage and hit save. And now if we go back a look, we can see it actually says homepage there. So that's kind of neat, but you might want a default one here instead. So what I could say is equal to, and I could put this uh, back in, just make sure that we have the quotation marks around everything. <laughs> and now it's saying homepage because we'd set it up, to, you know, we had the homepage there, but I could then delete my homepage and hit save. And now it's the front end mentor blog with CMS that's coming. So depending on if we pass the title through or not, it could use the title or it doesn't have to, or you could even come here and say, this is like, you know, FEM and then title, and it's going to just put the title at the end there. And you could modify the, the placeholder that you have here, um, or the fallback that you have set up right there. Depends how you want to work, but just a quick, a few little quick things there on using Astro. The next little thing we're going to do here, now that we have our primary layout properly set up that we'll be able to reuse across different pages is we're going to come back into here and we're going to make a CSS file. So in our source right here, I'm going to make a new one. We'll just call it style.css. Makes sense. And then one thing that's different the, when you're using Astro, just to make sure that you have the hot module reloading and everything, is we're going to go back to the layouts in our primary layout, since this will be used everywhere. And then right here at the top, I'm going to import that. So we're going to go back a step. So we're going to go back a step. And then we're going to find our, it should be here. Let's just write it out ourselves, style.css. And this might seem weird that we're importing it this way if you haven't used Astro or other um, sort of JavaScript frameworks like this. It's going to link it the same way that you would normally have linked once this uh, page is constructed because Astro is a static site generator by default. So we're not actually shipping any JavaScript to the client, which is good uh, as a default. But this just makes sure that we get access to like uh, the hot module reloading. So that means when we hit save, uh, the file actually saves. And I keep shrinking things that way. So let's do this. And we can make sure this is working. The best way to do that is going on your body and saying it has a background color. Uh, background color, let's just try purple, hit save. Voila, it is purple. Uh, so we know that it's actually working. If you did this as a regular link instead in, in your primary layout here, and you just did like a regular link like you would normally do in the head, then you're not going to get the hot module reloading. It's really annoying. You have to go and refresh your page every time. And awesome, we, we can get started and actually get some styling and other stuff done. Uh, before we jump into that though, let's go over to my index here and let's get rid of this H1. We'll get rid of my sidebar and we're going to throw out 
But we're gonna need a few different things here. Uh, we're gonna want at the top of the page, let's go take a look at the design actually. Um, uh, and let's go to my markup so we can just draw on this. We have the header that's gonna go across the entire page. This can be a component. I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and then here it's interesting because we have, uh, let's choose a different color just so we can sort of distinguish between some of the different things we're going to be doing. And like the first thing that you might think is I could do this and we definitely could. I said this before, we could do this as a three column grid that's set up like this and cut that across there and just make like this is, you know, an image that goes across both of them. And then we have this is one element that goes here and then we have a div that goes here and it sets up in that cell because this could even, you know, cut across like that. Uh, and then this is something that expands across two going this way. And then you know, we, we could set this up and we could definitely make this work. I'm gonna say we shouldn't do that though. And even though that's the simplest way to handle the HTML and usually we wanna handle things in the simplest way possible, uh, in a sense, it's the simplest way, but it's not really the most practical way to do it. So instead, let's uh, erase all of these green things that I just set up, and I think erase is not the one that I wanted to use. Uh, there we go, we go back, we're, we're back to where we started. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we definitely are going to set up with the header across the top, so that stays the same. That can be its own component right there. Then here, in my opinion, we have, this can be like a featured article component that can go across there. And then we have this right here, which is another uh, component, I guess we can have there. That's like our new articles component or something like that. Though so we'll look maybe at doing it, that one slightly differently, but we have that area there. And then down here at the bottom, we'll have, uh, uh, what's a good color? We'll do orange, I guess. And I realize color is not the best way to distinguish between things, but especially when the colors are almost the same, but we can see our boxes. You know, this is sort of like top articles or popular articles or something like that. So yeah, we'll do this as popular articles. We have this area for the new articles and then we have a featured article right there. Now, all of this can definitely live in. Let's just choose a color. We'll, we'll go with blue because I haven't used it and we'll go much fatter. Most of this can live in like this three column world, right? So I actually think up top, we can do a three columns for this area and then we can do another three columns over here. We just have this spanning too. That's my general idea. And then we could obviously, you know, this gets split and we're just drawing shapes everywhere right now <laughs> as I sort of get this messier and messier. Um, this could also be a two column layout. I just think we're doing three at the bottom. We can do the three there and it'd probably be easier to line things up. But these are sort of the plans that I come up with in my head as I'm going into it. And then sometimes things change a little bit. You find a problem with one approach over another one and you just have to adjust as you're going, which is completely fine, especially if you're not used to working with, um, you know, components and other things like that. Sometimes there's certain limitations in what you're doing uh, that you might not have thought of along the way. So let's just move this off to the side and make this window a little bit smaller so we can actually look at what we're building uh, while we're in our code here. And uh, actually for this area here, as I mentioned, this is going to be our header, which probably should live in the primary layout. Uh, and then we have the rest of the content there, but really fast, we can just come in. We're gonna need our header, which as I said, probably comes as part of the primary layout, but we'll, we'll add that there because it's something we need to build. Uh, we have our featured article. Uh, I guess here, let's just do, we're gonna have three calls with our featured article inside of that and we'll have that, we'll just call it uh, new. <laughs> yeah, we can do new. New articles is gonna be inside of that as well. Then we have, if we go back uh, here, we're gonna have another three calls. And inside of that three calls, we can have our popular, popular articles, right? So I think that makes sense. Uh, you definitely could just make this, instead of having three columns here and then another three columns here, you could probably just set this all up with one big section uh, of three columns and have it flow the way it would normally flow anyway. I just think in my mind, this is how I tend to work more often because I see them as sort of two separate sections. Um, you could eliminate this if you wanted to and probably get it to work without any issues. And you could even come in with subgrid potentially and do it too. But again, I find when you're working with components, subgrid can be kind of awkward in a way. Um, so it depends a little bit. Subgrid's awesome, I love it, but in this situation, I don't think we really wanna use it. So this is going to be my general setup for all of this. And a lot of the time, if I'm just doing a regular HTML and CSS project, I always encourage people to write the HTML first and then start styling things. 
But I tend to like having at least like the base styling set up first. So we're going to do that. We're going to hit save on this just so we have, we don't lose our work, I guess. Uh, and then we can jump on over to our style.css here. And the first thing I always like doing on a project is bringing in all my colors. So we have the style guide where a lot of that was set up. Um, we're going to do not just our colors, but we can start there. But if you're on Windows, I'd suggest that you get Windows Power Toys. And in Windows Power Toys, there's a built-in color picker, which is a Windows Shift C. Uh, to open it, I know there's color picker tools that are also built into Mac. Uh, and it's really cool because I can just go and I can click. I can even zoom in if I'm having trouble getting a color. And I can get it and it gives it to me as a hex, an RGB, and an HSL right there. And I can just copy it. So with that copied, we can do uh, call that one. We'll just call it color orange for now and bring that in. I'm not a big fan of naming colors like this, but we have our uh, that orange color and we also have this yellow color that's here and they're both sort of used as accent colors. So I'm gonna grab the two of them <laughs> as some colors there and I'll be back in one second. I'm gonna get like my whites and my grays and all of that and I'll just skip ahead as I color pick those. And there we go. Those are the colors that I'm going to be using. <laughs> I think those are the only ones in this project right now. So I went with neutral for like this really dark blue color uh, that's there just because it felt like it sort of fits in with, I think it's the same as this color here. Uh, is it actually? Let's go take a look. Maybe I missed one. Five. Yeah, it's the same color. So to me, a 240, 100. Oh, it's a little bit different actually. I thought they were the same. Uh, okay, we'll grab that one as well. So that one can be my 800. Look at that. Uh, super similar, neutral, 800. And people always ask me about my color naming here. So my general, they're so similar. Uh, this one's just a, no wait, that actually color picked them the same. What's this one? I might've color picked the wrong one. I did, okay. Sorry about that. I'm like, why is it the same values? There we go. Uh, so this one's a little bit more saturated. So a little bit more blue comes through basically is the difference. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's the more saturated, less saturation, saturated, but they're very similar. Um, but yeah, I, I like naming my colors or numbering my colors. So I have like my neutral colors and then I have a nine, eight or be like the darkest ones. It's like font weights, right? Nine hundreds really bold. One hundreds very light. It's the same with how I do my colors. Uh, my accent colors usually follow the same thing. I'll have a color accent and then my accent will have like lighter and darker versions of it. Except in this case, we only have an orange and a yellow. So we're going to do something a little bit different with how we set this up where I am gonna have a color accent. So we can say color accent. We only have one. I tend to give that a 400 anyway. <laughs> and that's gonna be my var color orange. Um, these ones I guess actually could have numbers as well. The 400 for me is always my base because again, I just get it from my font weights. 400 ends up being the base. 500 might make more sense because you could get it in the middle a little bit easier if you did like a one to a thousand. Um, but it's one of those things where I just got used to using 400 as my middle value. Even though we don't have other values, I don't have a lighter accent or a darker accent, I'm going to stick with just the 400 just in case a new one came along. And then I don't have to, you know, have an orange and then an orange darker or lighter or then I have a number in here and it's different somewhere else. Um, so it's just how I do it. If you have a different way you want to name your colors, by all means, go for it. Um, but we'll see how we're going to tackle this because if you notice right now we have the orange being used in all of these places and then we have the yellow here and the yellows uh, actually being used as the highlight color on this as well. So I'm just going to have something that inverts my colors and it's going to change what the accent color is uh, on that class when we do that. Now I'm going to fast forward again because I'm just going to bring in all my font stuff and I'll see you in just a second. All right, so my colors are done. Now we have my fonts coming in. Uh, so I'm doing my font family base. It's the only one. So you could just say font family if you wanted to. But again, if ever you brought in another font family, you'd want some way to prefix it. Uh, and in this case, it is inter. I have my regular and my bold. The bold here, I think is actually a 900. Uh, and I think we're actually going to want a font weight semi bold being 700. Uh, and it's kind of funny. I move away from numbering. Like here, it's I'm following the same numbering system that I use for my colors. And when I do my font weights, I don't use the numbering system. But that's because my bold, I actually want to be 900 and my semi-bold is 700. And sometimes your regular will be a 300 or sometimes your regular will be a 500. Uh, so I tend to, this is like, I break away from the numbering system in the one place the numbering system comes from. Go figure. Um, but that's how I do it. Just because I used to do this and then feel really weird when this would be a 300. That, that triggered me. <laughs> so I started just naming these 
uh, instead. So I think we're gonna go with that because yeah, this is definitely black and I think these numbers here are using the, um, the 700, maybe it's even a 500, so we'll see along the way. One thing here though is we're using inter and we have inter and we need to be able to use inter and we had that font. So we're gonna come up to the top here and set up a font face rule. And if you haven't done font face, I'll put a link in the description to a more in-depth video on it. Very simple though, uh, what we need to do. And in my at font face, the first thing we need to do is a font family. So we can get that set up and we name it whatever we wanted. I could call this, you know, I, anything I want base. If I wanted to, it doesn't matter. This is how I'm going to be referencing it in the project. But generally speaking, we want to keep the name of the actual font. So we can say font, uh, enter there. I'm getting some syntax highlighting that to go away in a second. Uh, next up, we're going to do a source, which is going to use a URL. Now that it has a source, it's happy here. Uh, and in this case, we need to find the, the actual one that's in here, which has a bit of an awkward name. Uh, it's in my public folder, but if you're referencing anything in your public folder, you're just going to start that off with a forward slash. And then it's going to be going to the root of your project. And when the way that Astro works and it's using Vite under the hood, so the way Vite actually works is anything in your public folder is just basically in your root folder. So we need to go into our fonts, not a problem. And then from our fonts, we want to get this one. So I'm just going to copy the, the file name that we have here. You don't need, we could always update uh, the file name because it's a little bit of an awkward one in this case, uh, but we'll go with exactly the file name that we have because this is our variable font. So we have our slant and our weight that's built into this variable font. And I don't think we'll be playing with the slant, but we will have access to the different weights that are built into it, which is awesome because that means we can come here and say font weight. And I we need 400, all the way up to 900. So we can just say 400, 900 like that. And it's gonna include 400, 900 and all the ones in between. And the last thing we can do here is a font display. And I'm gonna put swap uh, the choices here. This is about how the fonts loaded in and when it goes to the fallback font. So it's up to you on, on what you wanna do there. I tend to use swap most of the time. It gives it enough of a delay to have time to load in. Some people prefer much shorter delays just so you don't get those content jumps and stuff. So there's other options here. Uh, I'll put a link to font swap or font display with the different options in the, art, uh, in the description down below. And I always like making sure this is actually working. <laughs> so let's get some content on our page here. Uh, once again, we can do our H1 and say, hello world, <laughs> there we go. And let's go to my styles and we can just come to our body now because we're going to need a body selector anyway and say my font family is my var font family base, which I said was enter and it looks like it's working and it looks like it's working, but I don't know for sure because my fallback is a sans serif. So let's just say that here we're actually going to do a fantasy fallback. Uh, so we really know if it's working or not and it looks like it's working, but let's just change the name here to in and you can see it's actually changed now to impact of all things. I don't know why that's my fantasy font, but uh, whatever you can see it's not the right one. But if I come all the way up here and I change that back to in and I hit save, you can see it's actually working now. So uh, we want that to be uh, enter and we want this one to be enter and we want this to be a saw serif fallback and everything should be working properly right now. And before we start worrying about some of the other styles on my body, I do have some general resetty things I like doing. Uh, one of those is my box sizing border box, I think is pretty straightforward. Uh, and then we have my H1, H2, H3, H4 paragraph. I'm gonna put a margin of zero on those. Uh, I find it's a little bit easier to do that uh, on a lot of projects I work on. So some people don't like resetting margins on everything. I don't like doing the star selector necessarily. I like changing it where I need to, but I just find this in general gets me closer to what I actually want. Another thing that I like doing uh, is part of my reset is choosing my paragraphs and list items and giving them a text wrap of pretty, which just changes the text wrapping of a little bit. Make sure you can't have orphans. If you don't know what that is, don't worry, just write it anyway. It's a nice progressive enhancement and putting a max width on my paragraphs to make sure that they don't get too long. It just makes readability a lot easier. You could probably boost this up a little bit. One of those things you might wanna play with project to project. We'll start here as my, our base and we can always adjust it if we feel like we need to. One other thing that I use is a role equals list has a list style of none, a margin block end and a padding of zero. And what that's doing is just taking off, uh, should we do a margin of zero on that? Maybe we'll do a margin of zero for this one. Uh, and what that's doing is just, if we have a role of list on a list, <laughs> uh, list item, uh, it's giving it these styles. And the reason that we're doing that is if you do a list style of none, it actually in Safari screen readers will strip away 
a item from actually semantically being a list. Um, and it's a little bit weird. This, I believe, isn't the case anymore for navigation. So if you have a list in a navigation, you can use your list style of none. I don't use this too often, uh, but it can be convenient in the right place. Uh, or I've been using it less often than I used to, especially because of that thing. Um, but we'll probably use it one or two times in this project. And I'll explain it a bit more when we get to that point if you're not completely understanding what this is doing. And one more that I have all the time <laughs> is my image max width 100% display block just to make life a little bit easier along the way there uh, for our general styling. So let's jump over. We have our headings and our paragraphs here. So I am going to, let's just copy this because I'm going to choose these same ones. And on the H1 through our H4, we can set a tighter line height because uh, these always tend to be larger font sizes. So I tend to have a bigger um, line height on them. Uh, but if we look at the design, you will notice, let's go and open that up again. And if we, let's just clear everything off of here. Uh, if we take a look at it, the color of all of my headings, right? All of these, uh, even here versus here, the headings are a darker color or lighter color uh, than the paragraphs, which are a little bit more subdued. So we do want to change the color of these compared to the regular paragraphs. And actually, I think what we'll do is here I have all my colors set up, but we have this accent color, which is like, these are just general, uh, like the, they're just colors, right? Here it's sort of saying how I'm using it. So this is an accent color versus just a yellow or an orange. So we're gonna come here and we're also gonna say color, uh, I'm gonna call one, uh, we're gonna do a color body first, and we're also gonna have a color heading. And for my body, we'll say this is my var color neutral 400 because it's sort of that more grayed out version that we see there and then for the color heading we can come in with our darkest one which was the 900 right there so uh setting that up then we can jump back down over here and just say and we'll see how this is going to play in a little bit later too uh, but we'll come here and say that the color is nice and easy for our, uh color heading we also have the font weight here which has to be the bolder one so we can say that our font weight is the font weight bold. And just like I like putting text wrap pretty over here on my headings, I also like doing a text wrap of balanced or balance. I always write balanced, it's balance. <laughs> so we'll put that there, uh, but it's similar to text wrap pretty in that it just makes things look a little bit better, generally speaking. Now let's jump down onto the body where we can do a bit more styling. So one of the ones here would be our color. So our color here was our uh, color body that we wanted. In general, I like having a bit bigger of a line height. So we're gonna try 1.6 and just see where that brings us to. Uh, but that should probably give us a good thing. And one thing I haven't done yet is a margin of zero. So we can add the margin zero on our body right there. Awesome. So I think we can actually you know, jump in. We have enough in place now. At least it's going to sort of be in the right direction. Uh, we are going to need something that's going to hold everything off the side of the page. But I want to talk about that a bit later because I handle that a little differently than I used to. So let's start by, by setting up a heading there. And I guess I should have mentioned that wrapper before. I always forget wrappers uh, or containers or whatever you want to call them. Uh, or you know what? Let's set that up. Now we're going to come back to that. So it's going to make more sense if we have content on the page and see it happening. So uh, yeah, we can start working on that header that's going to go across the top. And as I said, for that, I actually want to come in here in my source and we have a layout, so we have a pages. I'm going to make a uh, new folder in here and that folder is going to be called components. And in the components, we're going to make a new file and I'll call it header.astro. Once again, it's with a capital H, it's just the naming convention of our components within Astro. So we can get rid of my sidebar and nothing too fancy here. We need a header, <laughs> right? Uh, the weird thing with this site actually when I was looking at it is uh, we have a logo. <laughs> then we have an article title. This isn't the title of the page. It's the title of this featured article. And these are also article titles. And then these are article titles, but none of these technically speaking are more important than each other. Visually speaking, this one's more important because it's bigger, but none of them are like from the standpoint of what we're looking at here. None of them are, are more important than one or the other one. So to me, we have a missing title of a page. We don't have a title on this page. So I'm actually going to do an H1 here. And I didn't add this class yet. We're going to do it in a minute, but we're going to say that we're going to create a class of visually hidden and we're going to put, I'm going to call it the W because <laughs> I don't really know what else uh, to call it. Cause we just have that W logo that's right there. Uh, and then here I'm going to come in and we'll do a link 
uh, a href is going to be equal. It's the home page, so we can just do a forward slash, and I'll give that a class is equal to logo uh, right there. And then inside of that, we can come in with our image, src and alt, uh, like that. And the alt I'm gonna leave blank because I see this as a decorative image. You could potentially make the argument that you don't need this here because it's going to be the alt, but I do think, you know, we need something as a title of the page. And I find that's a something that's missing here. The W home, I don't know what, what you'd call this. So if you have a, a name for it, leave it in the comments of what this potentially should be for the H1 of this page. Uh, Cause every page does need to have an H1 on it and only one H1. If you've read that you can have multiple H1s, that was part of the document outline that no browser ever implemented and it's no longer a thing. Hey, a little interruption here because as I was editing this, I realized this was a little bit of a mistake putting my H1 here. I think it makes sense in the context of this individual page, but in the header of the entire thing, it doesn't make sense because if we click into an article, I'd actually want the title of that individual article to be the H1 for that page. So I should have done an H1, visually hidden just like this, but included it as the first thing in that individual page on my index.astro page uh, for the homepage of my site. And that way I could have different headings on the other pages. So yeah, as I was watching this, I'm like, wow, I wish I'd thought of that at the time. Uh, I was. I I guess too hyper focused on this one page since it was the only one we had a visual design of at the time or something. But so yeah, that's just how I see it anyway. So again, let me know in the comments uh, if you disagree on anything, but I really do think the bright future of the web 3.0 is not the heading of this page. It is the heading of that article and every article has a heading. So that doesn't make sense as an H1 here either. So that's why I took a bit of a different approach here. But anyway, let's get back to the, the regular video now uh, so you can see how I get through the rest of the project because I think that's the only change I would make throughout the entire thing. Uh, so here, let's we have our images. Uh, so logo.svg, I hit save. We won't see it yet because we're not using this anywhere. So let's go and fix that. Whenever we're working on something, we like to see it actually showing up on the page. So let's jump back over to the primary layout and let's come here and we're gonna say that we wanna have our header. And I'm getting syntax highlighting saying there's a problem because we haven't, there is no header. So I'm also gonna import that, import uh, header from and it would be back a step and then my components and then my header.astro. There we go, hit save and look at that, the W and my W is there and it's a link that goes back to the home page. perfect. So we can go back to that header file, we can keep on working here. So we can do our a nav, so let's do a nav that's gonna have a UL in it, that's gonna have li times one, two, three, four, five and each one of those will have a link and in this case, uh, well, this is our homepage, so we can put that link there. And then for the other ones for now, I'm just gonna middle mouse click and drag down and then do a hashtag so we don't have those pages set up. I'll quickly just fill in the text here and I'll see you in one second. And now we hit save and we should see it. There it is, it's showing up over here. And now you have two choices at this stage. Because we're using Astro, Astro does support scope styling. So if I wanted to style this and make it look a little bit better, I could come and I could just go over to my style.css and I could style all of this over there. You know, come make sure everything has the proper class on it and everything else. Or because we're here, I can actually come down to the bottom and do a style. And in here I could do different things. So I could say that my UL has a list style of none and it's going to turn off the bullet list. And we could do our margin of zero and our padding of zero and everything is starting to, you know, get styled properly. And we can do our display, display of flex here, and it's gonna make it flex, and we can do our gap of one rem. And so I can style all of that here, and even though I'm using a UL, it's styling this UL and only this UL, because this UL is the one that's inside of this file. So let's go back to my primary layout for now, and let's just come here and, or not my primary layout, sorry, let's go to my index, and after the, let's replace my hello world because we don't need that anymore, but let's come in with a UL li times five with lorem in it, just so we have some text. And this is still coming through as a regular styled list, even though in our header, we have just a UL selector. And this is how scope styling works within Astro and basically uh, any JavaScript framework that supports scope styling is the styles you put here are scoped only to whatever markup is on this page that we see right here, or within this file, I should say. 
So this can be really convenient when we're working on different things like that. And then knowing that my navigation is all being, you know, anything that's in my header is being styled here. And then anything in this other component is being styled there. Uh, so you can take whatever approach you like. If you don't like this idea, you want everything just to be in your style sheet, by all means, go that route. If you like this idea of having the styles for each thing here, you can do that. And the nice thing with scope styling is you don't have to worry about naming stuff anymore because I can just select my UL and style my UL and it will only affect the UL that's in this file. Now there are some limitations that can come along with scope styling, but this is one of those things uh, that can definitely be handy uh, in the right situation. So the other thing in this situation actually that we'd wanna do, um, sticking with the scope styling is a display flex and a justify justify content space between uh, up in this area as well. The only problem is the W is still right there. Uh, but we have, you know, our navigation is now currently under my head uh, and let's move out of the way, I guess. Uh, we can go on down there. But so we have the navigation there and then at the other end, um, the other content. So let's fix that. Let's actually use this visually hidden class that I've created. And visually hidden classes are very handy. I would suggest you have one as part of like your general CSS file that you use project to project, just because it enables us to include extra um, context for things like screen readers that we don't visually need to actually have. So we're including the context, but we're visually hiding it. And we'll see a few different situations throughout this project where that's actually a, a good thing to have. So we can jump over to my style.css here, and I'm just gonna add that in, visually hidden. Uh, this is what it looks like. I'll put a link to an article that explains this in more detail so we don't have to go over the entire thing, but I'm gonna hit save now, and if you look at the W, it will vanish away. So it's basically not part of the layout anymore, but again, it's still part of the DOM, so uh, it adds that context in there. Cool, well, let's go back to my header and let's open up that image again, because we do need to uh, improve the coloring and other stuff here. So I'm gonna say the links in my heading here have a text decoration of none, and they have a color of current color, which will get the color from the, the font that we were already using. Uh, and one more thing is I've noticed they're sort of stuck to the top of the page, and we probably want that on this one here to have an align items of center so that it's, just, it's centering that within that W that we have right there. We also need a hover state on this as well. So I did mention we're gonna be using modern CSS, which is going to include a little bit of nesting. So here I'm gonna do an ampersand hover and an ampersand focus visible like that. And what this is doing, the ampersand is just a placeholder for the A. So it's like doing a hover, a focus visible. Nesting when you just have a single element here isn't always the most useful, but I just like having it all sort of within the context of what I'm working on. Uh, and then my color would be my var color accent, 400. And if I save that, we should take it, there we go. We can see that it's working and I have my colors going on my hover state there. Perfect. Uh, so let's jump down. We're going to do a bit more before I worry about wrapping and sort of holding my content. It's I, I would normally have that set up earlier, but I want to explain um, that and having more content will help. So let's come and just quickly get something put together down here. The content is eventually going to come from the CMS, but for now we just need something in place. Uh, and we do have this this image that we can use. We have all of these images we can use. So we're not necessarily gonna focus on making it perfect, but we'll, we'll try and get it close enough um, w based on this content so we know the layout is working before we start bringing in the, the generated content from the CMS. But for now, let's, let's just focus on this featured article. So for that, I am actually going to come in uh, and in my components, we're gonna make a new component called featured article.astro and we can get started working in there. So for this featured article, what do we have? So let's just, well, this can be an article, makes sense. And we have an image that goes across the top, right? And we have an image that's going to go across the top, so that needs a source as well as an alt. Then we're gonna have a heading, and I'm gonna do this as an H3. I'll explain this in a minute, um, my thinking here. I'm gonna do that as an H3, and then I'm gonna do a div, and then I'm gonna do a div with a paragraph plus a link that's gonna have a class of button on it. So <laughs> the H3, we've skipped a heading level. I'm gonna fix that in a minute because I have my H1 that's being hidden away and we don't have an H2 right now. 
uh, but we'll explain that in a second. But then we're looking at this here right now. So I have that, I have my image that's at the top, then I have my heading. And just because down here, we're sort of splitting this off into two columns. For me, the easiest way to do that is this is in one column that's gonna be on its own right there. Then I have the paragraph that's coming in uh, and the button that are both in this other column living together right there. So that's why I've organized it in the way I have. Now really fast, uh, I'm gonna bring in the content, so the, the source and the text here, and I'll just skip ahead while I do that. All right, so I've gotten some stuff here. So we're just gonna bring it into our layout so we can see it. Uh, so we're gonna jump back on over to our index here. We're gonna come here, we need to get that. So we have to import our featured article. And uh, my autocomplete worked for me there, so that was great. And then here I can do my featured article and hit save and we can see that it has brought it in. Awesome. Uh, my font sizes are really far off, <laughs> uh, but that's okay. Uh, that's all coming in. I made a mistake obviously in the path to my image. So let's see what I did wrong there. It was image web three desktop. Oh, <laughs> I needed image here as well. Image web three desktop. Ha, fantastic. Okay. So we have that content coming in. This is great, uh, but there's a few things that I wanna mention before we get the layout actually working here. And that's, I have my article, and as I said, I skipped a heading level. The reason I skipped a heading level is because when we look at the design, I mentioned that all the headings are sort of equal importance, right? This is the heading of one article, heading of another, heading of another, heading of another. And this is my new section. This is another section down here. Uh, but we sort of have these three sections and I'm just trying to think of the hierarchy of these three sections. So we sort of have a featured article and then in the featured article, we have our article here and right. Then we have a uh, new articles and then in there we have, you know, one, two, two, three. And then we have another section here which is the, we said it would be top articles. And then there, once again, we have our one, our two, and our three. And because of that, like if we're doing it this way here, and this is exactly how I'm seeing it, well, to me, we need, this is the heading that's going to be creating that section of content. And that's what headings are for. Headings are for creating hierarchy and organizing our page. It literally does that. It's like creating a table of contents uh, in a chapter book or in a textbook or something like that. So to me, before this right here, we can come and we can actually say that we have an H2. So we can actually say that we have an H2 called featured article. Because when we look at this visually, it's really obvious that it's a featured article. But if it, imagine you can't see this or there's the CSS doesn't load, it's really not so clear what would be a featured article versus a new article versus whatever is at the bottom there. Whereas when the article is the biggest thing on the page, it's the most obvious. So also for screen readers and other things like that. So here we can say that this has the class of our visually hidden once again. And that now we've created this section here and it just so happens to only have one. It could be featured articles, but we only have one. So I think it makes sense uh, to keep it that way, just like that. Uh, and then we have the article that's coming in. Now, the other thing that we wanna do here is this read more button is terrible. Um, this is like the classic example of an issue that's super common that you should never just have a read more. Read more what? The link has to have some context because if you are using a screen reader, what happens is you're often skipping through different things that are focusable. And so you're going to get to read more, but you don't know what you're reading more about. <laughs> so what you generally should do in situations when you have a read more, again, it's obvious that it's read more about this. But what we want is a span with a class of visually hidden that would have the title right here. So web, right? Read more about the bright, read more about the bright future of web 3.0 uh, or something like that question mark. I don't know. I don't always like repeating exactly the title there, but especially when we're going to be bringing in dynamic content, it's often the easiest way to do it. Uh, so yeah, read more. Don't have just a read more link. Terrible to have those. Um, and actually speaking of accessibility, we should add a skip uh, to main. We'll do that in a little bit. First, let's uh, get a few more things done and then we can jump back to there. Uh, so I'm just going to reset this to get rid of all my chicken scratch that's on there. And before we move on though, before we style this up to look a little bit nicer, 
we can get to how I like handling my wrappers now. So I'm gonna come right here and I'm gonna do a base layout. And my base layout, I like using a display of grid for. And I've done an in-depth video on this, uh, on how this works and everything. So if you'd wanna watch that, by all means you can. Uh, where I go a lot further than what I'm gonna do in this one. This one I'm gonna set it up for one base size. And what we could actually do here is uh, put in a max width. And in this case, I think it's like 1180 or something. So we can come in with the size that we want. And then I'm gonna do a grid template columns. And then I'm gonna come in with my grid template columns. And here's the fun bit where we're gonna do a min max uh, for the inside and outside. So actually we'll copy this and paste it. And then for both of these, we want to do, it depends what we want. Actually, let's do it with a variable here. So we'll call it, it's not really padding, but I like calling it padding. So we're going to say the variable is called padding. And then the maximum value here will just be one FR. So it takes up the extra space. So let's just say that we have some padding here. Padding will be one rem on the left and right. Again, it's not real padding, but we're calling it padding because it's the closest um, approximation to what we're creating. And then here we're going to do the middle area. And the middle area is going to use a min function and it's gonna choose the smaller between our var of max width and a uh, and 100% minus <laughs> the var padding times two. And we have to do the times two here uh, for that. And this does order of operations, so it's gonna do this first, but if you wanna just be more clear, you could add uh, an extra sort of parentheses around that. And I think I broke something because my coloring looks a little bit off and my syntax highlighting. I think I'm okay though. I think it just because of what I have set up, maybe the, the syntax highlighting is having a bit of issues. We'll find out in a second when I try it. Um, but basically I, for this type of thing, you could definitely just do a wrapper or a container uh, class. The advantage of doing it this way is it opens up some extra doors down the road um, for if you need wider and narrower things and different stuff like that. So that's what I focused on in the video, but I also like the, how I can use this and not need to wrap things. Um, and there's two different things we're gonna set up here. I don't think we're gonna ever need the full width, but we're gonna start off by just saying anything that's a direct child. So again, the ampersand is the base layout. So anything that's a direct child of my base layout will get a grid column of two over three. So it's gonna use this area as where it's gonna be sitting. Um, and then we're gonna say anything that has a full width will have a grid column of one over negative one, which just means go from one extreme to the other. And there's a little bit more we can do with the full width. But for now, we're gonna set it up like that. And let's see and make sure this is working. Cause again, that syntax highlighting issue is got me a little bit concerned, but we'll come back to my uh, index here. Um, and actually, I'm just trying to think if we'd want to do this on the entire layout. So maybe we'll go to our primary layout actually. Uh, and a lot of people don't like putting this type of thing on the body. So maybe you want an extra nested div, but we could just do a class base layout, hit save. Ah, it did work. Okay, so it was wrong with the syntax highlighting. Uh, and now we can see that it's holding it and there we go. It, it works as we get bigger. And if I open up my dev tools uh, and we shrink things down, we'll see that everything just shrinks on down as you'd expect it to. So we've, we've got it working, fantastic. Uh, and we're, yeah, we're ready to keep on rocking and rolling here and, and working on this. So uh, yeah, maybe a little bit of overkill again for this type of layout, um, but I'm going with it anyway because it's how I like to work these days. Perfect, and I don't know why that self-closing is gone, but there we go, we can continue on here. And let's get this set up and looking a little bit nicer. So that was my uh, featured article. And so for the featured article, we have that article there. So we're just gonna come here and we can come in with our style and we can say that our article has a display of grid and a grid template columns of uh, repeat to one FR because if we come and take a look, I'm just focused on it looking like this right now. So again, we're gonna split it right down the middle there. And that just means that we wanna grab the image that's in here and we're going to do a, a grid column of one over negative one. So it stretches the entire size and then we get the title there and we get this over here, perfect. Uh, obviously the heading size here is wrong. So that would be my H3 gets a font size 
var, and I'm guessing this is my biggest one, which was 900. Uh, these font sizes, by the way, when I created them, I just guessed at them uh, based on the JPEG. So my sizing might be a little bit off. I forgot to mention that at the time. Um, but yeah, hopefully it looks half decent. And there we go. <laughs> That's basically our component. We do need a bit of spacing here. But uh, the, and we do have a pretty big looking gap here, but I don't want to match exactly that because this could be focused on like where the lines are going. But we do have a pretty good gap that way. Though at smaller screens, we obviously <laughs> want everything just to line up up and down. We want it to stack. So what I should have done is included this uh, not within uh, here, but within a container or media query. So I think using a container query here makes sense and it's actually gonna make it, I think, easier to line up to, like here we're gonna have a three column layout um, and even the parent here will be a three column layout. So to get everything to match each other and how they're all working, I think using a container query will be the easiest way to do it. The problem with container queries is you do need to have a container <laughs> um, for them to work. Because right now, what would be the container? Potentially the container would be this entire thing, but that doesn't really make much sense. We could set it up for that, but I really want something that's only looking at the size of this component. I don't want it to be looking at the size of anything else. I just want it looking at this size here. So to be able to do that, I am just going to come up here and we're gonna do a div class is equal to, uh, we'll just call it featured article container. You don't need these fan, you know, super descriptive names necessarily, when you're working on components, because again, the scope styling does help, but I do find uh, it just makes things a bit more clear when you're using them in a lot of cases. So I'm gonna stick with it like that, and we're just gonna say, and if you've never used container queries, once again, I'll put a link in the description, but I think uh, it'd be pretty clear how this is working. Uh, so that's my featured article container. Is this going to get a uh, container type of inline size? And so, now, if we, with that container type of inline size, what I'm gonna do is we can come here and we can say at container, if the width is greater than, I'm gonna say for now, let's just say 600 pixels. We're gonna change this uh, eventually, but for now we'll say 600 pixels and we'll just wrap all of that in there. So if our article has a container that has a width greater than 600 and we can write it this way, there's no problem. Uh, it should go up to two columns. So let's open up my dev tools again. And there we go, we can see it's actually working. We go from having it two columns and then when we hit that threshold, it jumps down to one. The difference with the container query is it's looking at the size of the parent, it's not looking at the size of the viewport. It's the only difference between a container, not the only difference, the primary difference that you'll notice right away between a container query and media query. Awesome, so that's working. Um, I'm sort of just letting you know, I'm going a little bit like, okay, we're doing this, now I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna jump over to this. This is sort of how I tend to work on these types of projects, just because I don't have like a sprint that I'm working on, right? Like, okay, this is the next thing I'm focusing on. Um, and it seems to be working for me, uh, so I'm gonna keep on going like that. I could have styled my buttons ahead of time and then had them ready to go, um, but yeah, sorry if it's a little bit scattershot, but we're gonna do our button now. Uh, we'll come in, this is sort of more my components, so we're gonna come down, lower down. I could make a button component, but I really don't think we need one for uh, this type of thing, so I'm just gonna go in with my dot button, and my background color on it can be my var, uh, color accent would make sense here, I believe. Yeah, and then my color on it is my var color. I'm just gonna say neutral 100. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. I think so. Uh, obviously we need a text decoration of none. And just in case we were to put this on an actual button element instead of on a link like I have here, uh, we're also gonna do a pointer, a uh, cursor pointer. Cursor, oh my God, of pointer right there. Um, not that we needed it in this situation. We need a bit of padding on that. Let me just fix this up because I do like having these the other way around. Uh, we need a bit of padding on there. So we're gonna try a 0.75M and a 1.5M. I tend to use M for padding, uh, which also means I need a display. I'm gonna do um, here, I'm gonna say it's an inline flex with two words because the display property now is a two, accepts two values, an inner value and an outer value. This is my inner value, that's my outer value. Uh, no, the other way around. That's my outer value, that's my inner value because flex changes what's inside, inline changes what's outside. You could also do this as an inline flex with the hyphen, but we're doing modern CSS, so we're gonna do it that way. 
let's just go take a look at how it's looking. Oh, my color was wrong. My color actually should be the dark one. So that was my color neutral 900. And there we go, but we need it to be, let's just get rid of this. We need it to be bold, spaced out a little bit. So that's fine. Uh, so my font weight is my var uh, font weight bold. And then we have a, a text transform of uppercase. And we have the letter spacing of like 0.25 CH maybe. Let's see how that looks. That's not too bad. I think that looks pretty good. The CH character, if you don't know it, is like characters wide. I sort of like it now uh, for letter spacing. I find it's a very convenient one to use for letter spacing. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I think when we also had the other state of it, uh, let's just open that here really fast. Um, it would be not mobile design. It was our active states. Let's just see. So it goes dark with white text when we're in our active state. So for the active state, we're gonna say and hover. So we're gonna say and hover and focus visible. Focus visible is what you want most of the time when you want focus. Um, it just helps with keyboard interactions basically uh, and not getting stuck when you click on something. It's the browser default uh, these days as well. So for here, we're just gonna change the background color to our var color uh, neutral 900 and our uh that was the background and then the color itself is our var color neutral 100. and so when we hover there we go perfect awesome uh this does bring up another thing though we do have a space here and i've removed my margins from stuff and i mentioned too we do need a space up here as well so for the spacing there's different ways that we could definitely bring spacing in uh, as, as we work on this. So that's with my button done, you sort of see it more, I think once that happens. So let's jump back on over, uh, to the featured article and let's think about different ways. First of all, we do want a gap here. So gap, it's actually smaller, uh, when we're in the, like, if we look at it this way, like two rem ends up being quite a bit. And I think if we look at the layouts, um, here, I'm going to cancel this just so we can cycle through. Uh, see how like the spacing isn't too much when we're in this one, but we go here, the space here gets quite a bit bigger. And I think the space here might actually get, no, the spacing there might be the same, but the spacing here definitely gets bigger. So I think what we're gonna do is a space gap of one rem, which looks fine. But then when we go up to the two columns here, so once we hit this, we're gonna do a gap have two rem and we're gonna see if we need to adjust the middle one but I just want to increase that spacing on the top a bit when we get to this point point. Um, and then as for the spacing here I'm gonna come in with a flow class I've used this class before so we'll jump back to style uh, it's sort of I have my visually hidden it's like a helper class like this or utility class so it's flow star plus star which is going to select every element except for the first element you could also do not first element but this keeps specificity relatively low uh, and the margin block start will be one rem. Um, we could, well, okay, we'll do it the way I usually do. <laughs> Flow space comma one uh, M actually. I use rem, but rem tends to be, uh, M is better because if you have larger fonts, you want bigger spacing, usually with flow spacing. Uh, so all that means is we're gonna end up adding a margin of one M to here because if we go back to my featured article, and we come on this div that has our paragraph and our link in it, I can add my class flow and it adds that space in there. Perfect. So look at that, that component is now done. Uh, obviously there's a bit more <laughs> that we need to do along the way here. We're eventually gonna make the, I think what we'll do, uh, the navigation menu right now needs to have like the hamburger state. So we'll add in that, um, the skip to main at the same time that we do that. But for now, I'm gonna jump over to my styles.css and we're going to bring in uh, a bit more of a layout class. I'm just trying to think, I have my base layout, so I'm gonna bring, I'm just sort of like keeping layout stuff together, helper classes together, things like that. Uh, so here we're gonna call this one, I'm gonna call it three columns. <laughs> I don't really know what else to call it. I don't usually do things like this, um, but we're gonna do a display grid because I, I basically want it to jump from one to three columns. So we're gonna do a display grid and we're gonna give it a gap. We'll just do one rem. 
And then we need to figure out when this is going to switch from one amount of columns to another. And for this, I am going to once again use a container query. We'll talk more about that in a second because that means this does need a container. So we'll have to set that up in a minute. But I'm going to do, or maybe we should do that first. Um, if we come and take a look at our uh, index here. This featured article is living in our primary article, our primary layout. Uh, and if we jump in our primary layout, we just have a body sitting there right now. So one thing I haven't done is included a main. And I wasn't sure if the main should go here as part of our, like, I guess that would make sense, right? So let's do that. We'll do a main here. My Emmet is, is problematic right now, but uh, so I keep writing stuff and it's not working, but we'll do our main is right there. And then we have our slot. Uh, the reason I wasn't sure is for footers, you would want to make sure it's out here. You can have name slots as well. So you could have a footer slot if you needed one. Uh, but based on the layout that we have, I guess this makes the most sense like that. Uh, and then what we can do is let's just come up to more generic stuff here. I'm going to say that we have a main is going to be a container type of inline size. And this is very common that I do this in my projects and not only main, I think it also does make sure uh, sense to have things like our uh, section here, the header, the footer, uh, and other things be containers. If you're using container queries, it tends to make your life a little bit easier in the long run. So I'm going to set that up like that. We're probably not even going to have a footer in this project, but this is the type of thing I often do these days now that I've started using container queries more often. And so because we have that, uh, when we do our three columns, let's just say at container. And for now, let's do a uh, width is greater than, we're gonna do 900 pixels. We're gonna change this in a minute, but we'll just say that it becomes grid template columns. And we'll just say we get grid template columns, repeat three, one FR. We'll go back over to my index. And then, so right here, we can come in and say we want three columns. If we hit save, when we get to a large enough screen size, it should, there we go, you can see it's working. We get to our three columns and this is falling into one column. Except of course we don't want this to be in one column. Actually, one thing you'll notice here though, which is cool, this is why I like container queries. Right now this is bigger than 600 pixels where the featured article had its uh, container query set up. So we have the image, then we have this as two columns. Once that gets shoved back down into a small space, it's stacking once again, because it's not looking at the viewport, it's looking at the container size. And the container size is small, so it's going back to the stack layout, which is great. But I need this to actually be able to span two of those three columns. Let's just add, uh, let's just do a quick thing here. I'm gonna do inverted, and in here, let's do a paragraph uh, that has some lorem in it, just so we have something else that can be in our thing, and we'll, we'll fix that up to make it look a little bit better. Uh, in a second, but we're just, you know, featured articles should be two columns and then we want this to be the third column on the right. So uh, back to my style, let's just come here really fast and say inverted has a background black and a color white. Uh, just so we, we can see it, we'll fix the colors for that in a minute because I'm going to be sticking uh, a little bit with that. We're going to make this big enough. There we go. And we can go back to my three columns. So uh, one of the things is we want to be able to span two columns out of our three. Uh, I guess we could also create a helper class that would allow us to span all three. I don't really need it right now. I don't know why I would do that. So maybe I won't bother with it now, but we'll, we'll say we'll, we'll do a span two anyway. So we'll say if something is a direct child that has a span two on it, it will get a grid column of span two. <laughs> nice and simple, <laughs> right? This maybe doesn't have to be part of three columns. This could be something that's more generic than this. Uh, but I think for now, uh, we'll leave it like that. And let's jump on back to my index. And I want this to have it. So we can come here and say class is going to be equal to span two, except it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, and that's just because this isn't, uh, component and you can't just put a class on a component like that. It'd be cool if we could do that. Uh, obviously we can fix this. We can make it work. What I wouldn't want to do just really fast is like the first thing you might think of is, well, I can come here and I can add that class to here and you could, I could add my span to here and it's actually going to work. And now it spans too. 
I don't want to do that though. And that's because my featured article in this situation is spanning to. I might run into having to include this at the footer of another thing or in a sidebar somewhere or somewhere else and I don't want that span to class to be on there. So ideally this is something that I can actually add to my class list or have as part of my class list but not always be a thing that's on my class list if that makes sense. So I want to be able to add a class when I use my component and have that class end up getting added to it here when I'm using that component in that specific situation. So that's not actually that hard to do, uh, but we do need to make a small change to how we've set this up, where instead of a class, uh, well, first of all, we need to get that. So that's, we have a class prop on there effectively right now, right? So this is effectively just like a class prop where I'm saying class is equal to span two. So here, what I'd wanna do at the top is uh, in my front matter uh, or in the code fence at the top here, what I could do is say const and we're gonna say class, and this is not gonna work, what I'll show you in a second is equal to astro.props. But you'll notice uh, I'm getting an error here and it's because we can't actually use the word class here. This is a reserved name, but what we can do is do class name instead. So we're effectively saying that I'm gonna grab something that's coming from, so what we're effectively saying is I'm gonna be using the class prop, but link it to the class name instead. So anything, anytime I put class here, it's going to pass it through as the class name because we can't use class because it's reserved. Then here, what I'm gonna do is instead of a class, I'm gonna say class list. Uh, the thing with class list is we can't just put something like this. We could just come here and say this is class name and it would actually work. It's gonna pass that three column thing. Um, it, it'll pass this class is now coming to the class name, which is coming to here. So that's actually going to work. The problem is we lost our featured article container. Uh, and you notice this says list, so it's actually looking for an array. So if you have one element, you can just do it like this and, and put the one thing that you want. If you have multiple uh, different things you wanna pass here, you whoops, you can just put some square brackets because it's looking for an array. Uh, and, then, and then I can put comma and I can just put a string right here. So now it's gonna get my featured article container and it's going to get the class name getting passed through here. And so it should work exactly how we had it before. Uh, with the advantage of now we have the three columns coming through where now we have I was saying three columns I think now we have the advantage of this span two coming through so we can see it's actually spanning across two um, I just realized one problem with the span two potentially is let's go back to the style uh, this span two should only be if we have multiple columns <laughs> so the span two should only kick in at this point which makes uh, nesting it make a little bit more sense there. So we can hit save on that. There we go. Uh, so yeah, that makes a little bit more sense. Perfect. Now the problem here is I have, this is when it's bigger than 900 pixels for the container. And then over here on this featured article, this is kicking in when it's bigger than 600. How do we know, like how can we actually align these to be happening at the same time? And this is where I wish we could use a variable for our, our sizes here. Because basically I want a minimum size. Uh, and this is a little bit how I've started using container queries a lot is I actually use a calc here. And this is Miriam Susan who showed us we could do this, which is awesome. Uh, and I like doing it based on the size of what I want the content to be. So if I'm looking at the design that we have, and let's go back to this one, like how big should one of these columns be as a minimum size? And usually for minimum sizes of content, it can be in pixels for sure, but I'm gonna do it in CH because I just find it works well with content. So I'm gonna say when we have room for three of them to be 25 CH wide. If we wanted to be a bit more specific, we could even add the gap calculation in here, but I think this is gonna be close enough. So now, so now <laughs> I'm resizing my image instead of resizing the browser. Uh, now we're gonna jump from having three col or from stacked content to having three columns at the point when we have room for three columns, each of 25 CH wide. Perfect. I want that same thing to happen over here. So when is that going to happen? And this is where again, a, a calculate like having a variable be really nice, but I'm just gonna say here we do a calc of because we're going up to two columns for this one, I can use that same 25 CH, but just say times two because it's for two columns. 
And again, I'm sort of magicking it a little bit to be within this layout where I know it's being used in a three column layout here. Um, but if I just sort of stick with my minimum content size being around 25 CH, it's just going to create a bit of consistency around the entire project. Uh, in general, it will create a little bit of uh, a middle zone in this layout where here we have three columns. Uh, then actually we'll see it a bit more when you bring in the other content. Um, but then we're going to jump to here. Uh, which is fine. This is two columns, but that's okay because look how wide it is. It should be two anyway. And again, this is where I prefer container queries over media queries because if this was all set up with media queries, we'd still be at three columns, but this got wider, so it should stay as two. Uh, but there might be a little like middle zone here. See how it stacks that way? To me, it's not the end of the world. Uh, I could minus one rem from this just because we have like a little gap here that's a little bit different. So it's creating a slightly different breakpoint. Um, but to me, that's fine. It really doesn't bother me and it, I find it works really well. So I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. We're just going to come in and add in those three that are going to go across the bottom. So let's jump back on over to my index and now we need another three calls. So again, I could technically uh, come here, right? So if we did div times three, uh, let's do div uh, inverted times three with uh, lorem inside each one of them, just so we can see it. It's going to put them down here. There's no problem. Ooh, it looks like our ooh, our gap is off, so we're gonna have to fix the gap there. Uh, I'll talk more about that after though, because you can see the spacing isn't right, or the alignment, I should say, isn't right. Um, so because this is all just being set up as three columns, like I could come in and do this. I just think that this should be grouped in something else, because as I said, we want a heading on that that we're probably gonna hide, and there's a little bit more to it. So for me, it actually does make more sense to close that three columns off there and come in with another three columns here where we can put in the, the, the other content that we just got rid of, the, the popular articles here. And actually that would sort of make sense. So why don't we do that? Let's, we'll, let's come over to here. Oops. Let's open up our sidebar and let's come into our components and we'll make a new one called uh, uh, popular art articles.astro. And let's add a code fence at the top. It's usually a good idea uh, to have one. Uh, we're gonna be using it anyway. Uh, and uh, from a few things that we know, I think actually even just saying that the three columns, we're probably gonna wanna pass that as a prop and just have this as our, you know, we can do popular articles uh, right there. Uh, with the, you can see it actually added it for me there. <laughs> so popular articles can be here and ideally class is going to be equal to three columns like that. So we know if we want to pass that down, we'd have to do it the same way. So here we'd have to do our uh, const class as class name is equal to our astro.props. Just like that. And in this case, I actually think it makes sense to have this as a UL. <laughs> so we can come in and say, it's a, it's a, it's a list of, of articles, right? We have three articles coming in. So we can do a UL uh, for each one of them. And then we can have our LI for each article. And then in here, we could do our article for each one of them. And for this UL, we are class, class list will be equal to our class name. So just for fun, let's come in and we'll just do a bit of content in here, content <laughs> uh, with some lorem. So let's bring that uh, content in there and then let's just duplicate this a couple of times. So we have three of them. And if we come take a look, we should see we have one big one. Oh, <laughs> I put them all in one list item. <laughs> that would make sense. <laughs> we duplicate our list items and we go and take a look and there we go, we get them coming in as three columns. Perfect. Uh, and this is one of those cases where I want to use that role is equal to list. And again, the reason for that is some screen readers, if you have a list style of none, which I'd want to put on this, will remove, will not announce it as a list. And it won't tell, many, tell the user how many articles there are. Sometimes we have a tendency to overdo lists, but this to me is a good time to do it where we're going to have a role of lists where we're here also going to have our H2 at the top. Uh, H2 is uh, popular articles. So we have our popular articles and then we're gonna get this list of elements that are popular articles and we know there's gonna be three of them because with screen meters and assistive technologies, they announce 
um, how many lists, or how many items are in a list. So I'm going to do it that way. And then we can have, you can put anything you want in a list item basically. So we have an article for each one of them. Now, obviously we don't want just some lorem that's going to be coming in here. Uh, you, we could turn each one of these instead of like having it like this, we could have it as a component because when we look at the layout that we're going to be creating, obviously each one of these has a very identical look to it. Uh, but eventually we're going to be grabbing all of this from uh, the CMS and bringing it in. We're just gonna be looping through the data we're pulling in from the CMS. So for me, it don't really need to make it into a component, uh, but we can still set it up and do it properly. <laughs> and we'll see that once we reach that step of, of building it out, but let's move this over for now. and. We'll create one of them at the very least, and then we can just copy paste it for now. And we'll get these numbers working too, because that's a fun little thing to do on the side there. So in our articles here, once again, we're gonna have an image and we're gonna have a heading, so my H3. Once again, so we're consistent with our heading levels. We're not skipping any heading levels. And I think having this, oops, that should actually have the class of visually hidden on it while we're at it. Uh, so we have the image then we have the heading and then we have this text that's right here and i'm just trying to think the easiest way to do it if we want to have like this wrapped or not which it just makes it a little bit easier to do two columns so maybe we'll do that we can just do a div here uh, that will close here div and then we have here our paragraph uh, that will come in i think that makes sense so we just have the box around the entire thing that's my article then we have the image here. The number will have come in very easily. We'll see that in a, a minute. Then we have the heading. This will all be wrapped. So that's the heading. The paragraph is there. So let's just bring in reviving retro PCs. Uh, I'll bring in that image in a second. I'll bring in the text. I'll see you in just a second. You don't want to see me write all this. Awesome. So let's see how that matches up with what we have right now. Uh, it won't match it perfectly, but it's not going to be terrible. Uh, we, we have some of the stuff in place at least. So one of the big problems right now, obviously, is the, the sizing of, of the different things here. Uh, so let's start just by creating a general uh, style <laughs> for how this is going to look. So we'll have an article uh, where, so the article should be, I'm going to do display grid. If you wanted flex, that could definitely work here, but I'm going to say it's a display of grid uh, and then grid template columns, where in this case, I'm going to say it's, I don't know, is it 100 pixels and then auto? That looks pretty good. Maybe, you know, I'm not measuring it based on the image, but I think that looks okay. Uh, we want a gap here of around one, I guess. Cool. Um, so, that, you know, this will just fill up the, the, this, the extra space that it needs uh, along the way. And really fast, let's just copy this. I know they're all gonna be the same for now. That's fine. And we'll once we use the CMS, we'll actually have it be different content. I just wanna have the placeholder there to make sure the styling of everything is working. And especially the numbering uh, that I'm gonna be doing, I want to make sure that's working too. And I wanna make sure my three columns is working, which it is, perfect. So let's get uh, the styling done here. We'll start with the numbers because I think that's the most interesting thing. And what I actually want to do is select the headings here. Uh, we're going to select the list first. So for the list, we're going to say that our list is going to do a counter reset of, uh, let's just say, uh, article count. And this is just basically naming a counter. And counters are really cool if you haven't used one before. So that's my UL. Then my LI is going to counter increment of my article count. So every list item within that UL will increment my article count. And then what we can do is my H3 before uh, can get a content. And if you're used to pseudo elements, you're probably uh, usually just putting an empty string here. But here what we're actually gonna do is counter. And then as you can see it, we want a name. So the name of our counter is article count and hit save. And look at that, we get a one, a two, a three coming in. So let's just say this is a display, um, uh, yeah, display a block on there. So it's on its own line and it's counting them. If I didn't have the counter increment here really fast, they're all zero because we have a counter, but it's not counting anything. So we need to make sure that it increments and it's incrementing it at the LI. So it hits the first LI, it's already incremented it one time. So that's why it started at zero, but the first LI actually set it to one. So one, two, three. Awesome, I love this so much. It's not often you use it, but it's super cool when we do use it. 
Uh, the other thing is we want the font weight on this uh, to be a little bit different. So I think it was my var uh, font weight semi bold. Uh, the color of it is obviously going to be different. It's the uh, var color accent because it's the orange color that we wanted. Uh, 400, I forgot that, there we go. And the font size is also different uh, and I moved it up just because I like my font and font together. <laughs> var font size, let's try like 600 um, and see, I think it's actually bigger than that. Something like that, cool. That looks pretty good. Uh, I just realized something though. We have a one, two, three. And if we look at the design that's right here, uh, you can see it's a zero, one, a zero, two, a zero, three. So to get that here where we have the content, we can just add a string. So we can actually say it's zero and then the counter. Uh, if you add a space here, it would put the space in. So string plus counter gives us exactly what we want. This would run us into an issue if our counter went past 10. Uh, so I do actually think there's a way of fixing that. Uh, so we can just say counter and decimal, decimal leading zero. That looks the same, right? Let's just, if you put a string here, let's just put the zero just so you can see it's adding it. Uh, so yeah, the decimal leading zero will put the zero. I think that might actually be the same issue though. Uh, let's find out. <laughs> we take that and let's just add, whoops, let's just take the whole LI and we're gonna duplicate. We have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11, save. And, ah, it doesn't, there we go, that is a solution. So <laughs> if ever you need to use that, it's your article and then you just do, uh, you do your counter name and then a decimal leading zero will let you go up there without running into any potential issues. Uh, counters are super popular, or powerful, not popular, they're not very popular. So I'll put a link uh, in the description to the MDN article and I've talked about them in videos before. If I have a good video, um, I'll, I'll make sure to include it in the description. I'm just trying to find, we have one, two, three. Uh, there we go, back down to three articles though. Cool, so we're getting there for the layout here and soon we're gonna hook this up to the CMS. We just have a little bit more styling that I wanna get done actually. Let's close my dev tools for a second now and just see. Uh, so we do need some extra spacing between these. <laughs> Obviously everything's glued and we have this problem with the alignment. I'm gonna fix that first because I know how to do that uh, without thinking about it. And on my gap here, where I wanted the bigger vertical gap, I'm just gonna come here and add a smaller gap down the left and the right. So this is the same, it's one rem here, it's one rem there, they match up. Uh, and now everything is aligning good, so that's perfect. So as we get bigger, it's looking pretty good. Everything's good as we get smaller then it's going to eventually break and stack and then that's eventually going to break and stack there as well. So awesome. I'm pretty happy with that and how everything there is actually looking. Now there's a few different ways we could handle some of this other spacing because obviously uh, when we look at the the overall layout here, let's just zoom back out. Um, we have a lot of space on the top of the page. We have the spacing in between these things. So we could create uh, for the spacing on the top and the bottom, I think I'm just gonna add some something to my padding. Uh, or actually we could just do that on the heading actually. Hmm, that might make more sense, just add the spacing on the, the heading. Um, but we do want something that can add spacing between areas. I don't know, often I do this as section, like section spacing or section padding, it depends on, on the design. Um, so I might just do that, just because we do want that to be consistent. So I do think on the heading it actually makes the most sense uh, to, to the header, I should say. It just makes sense here. On the header, we can say that we have a uh, margin block, which is the logical property for the top and the bottom of something like three rem. It looks a little bit bigger on the top than the bottom, to be honest, uh, but something like that I think would be okay for now. Uh, we could do something like a five rem, three rem, if you want more space on the top. On mobile, this might be a lot. So, you know, I'll be back in a second. I'm gonna see if I can get this to work with a clamp. All right, I'm pretty happy with this as my solution. So Vmax is gonna look at the bigger between the width and the height. Uh, so the smallest for the top and the bottom is 1.5 and then the top one can get bigger. Uh, so basically as the screen increases, the padding between things will increase, but it sort of clamps out um, at different sizes. And then as it gets smaller, you can see there's like a small difference in the padding as my design shrinks, but it locks in at minimum sizing of 1.5 uh, at the smallest. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that's looking without having to bother with a media query. Now let's jump over to our index for a second here. Um, 
we have our primary layout, which has all of this in there. I don't want to do this because I want to use my primary layout in different ways. So I'm just trying to think of the best way to add the, the spacing between everything here. Uh, and so one option is just creating a utility class that we could place because uh, I don't want to give it necessarily on my three columns either because you might want to have three columns without any additional spacing. Uh, I find adding spacing to classes that are doing something else often gets you in trouble more often than not. Uh, and I realize we haven't styled this up and we're going to get around to that in a little bit. Now, if this was the only page I was completing, I would just put a gap, a grid on my primary layout and add a gap and it would solve it. But because I want to use this primary layout also on other pages, uh, with my blog and other stuff that wouldn't actually make a lot of sense to do it that way around unless like I always end up with like a nested thing in here, but I wouldn't want to count on having to do that. So that's why I'm not going to take that approach. Uh, and instead, I think what we're going to do is just add in uh, a utility class that we could use to add in spacing. I always call these um, section, <laughs> just like dot section because sections always have extra space on them. Um, so I'm trying to decide if I want to do the same thing uh, in this case, and I think I will. So let's go over to my style and we're just going to, let's see, this is all sort of layout-y stuff. And this is, it sort of falls into layout <laughs> in a sense. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to do it right here sort of as we switch between, uh, we'll do it close to our flow here actually, flow. Um, so let's just do section is going to be a margin block end of uh, we'll just do three rem for now, maybe. I'm not a huge fan. So if you have an alternative here that you'd like to do, one option here too is just like a, you know, really do it as utility class, margin, uh, block, and Excel or something, and then whatever. So it could even be like for short, margin, block, and Excel, uh, or however, margin, block, end, which ends up also being margin, bottom. <laughs> or margin, bottom would just be that, I guess. But margin, block, and Excel is another choice that you could do there just because it's like a large space and you could have spacing utilities for everything. But because I don't have like other sizes here and I don't really think I'm going to need them for what I'm building here, I'm just going to call this a uh, section. I'm just going to have that as a section. And anytime I have a section that I need that, it's not my favorite name. So if, again, if you have a better one, leave a comment uh, to let me know what it is. So in future projects, I can use it. Uh, and we'll jump back on over to my index where I have everything and this three columns could get it. So here we could do our section and then here on my popular articles, I could also add my section and now we get that spacing uh, that's on there. I'm adding it here too, even though it's not at the bottom, just so if ever the page was smaller, it's not glued to the bottom of the page. Um, but yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. Let's come and do this next. Uh, just to make that look a little bit better. And it's also going to let me talk about my accent <laughs> utility class a little bit because I think it's going to work well here. Uh, and then we'll make the navigation work with a mobile menu and then we'll bring in the CMS at long last. So for this inverted class, uh, I think for now, I'm just going to set it up here really fast. So we have an H2. So we have an H2 plus, let's just say article times three. Each article has an H3 plus a paragraph with, we'll just do a little bit of lorem in there for now. Uh, so this says new, this one we don't actually have to hide because it's supposed to say new, it's there, we just can't see it. <laughs> uh, and then we have the H3s here, which um, are, remember these had the heading color on them? So we'll talk more about that too. Uh, so here from my H3s, we'll just do article one, article two, and article three. Uh, so we can't see those either, the paragraphs, we can see. And the reason we don't see our headings is because on the headings we have a specific color being assigned to them. So what we're going to do is let's jump over to my style where I created that inverted class. The first thing is inverted. I think any time you have the inverted, you'd have some padding on there because it'd be kind of awkward if you don't. So uh, we'll do maybe two, we'll see how that looks. But instead of setting colors like this, what I'm going to do, or I guess the background would actually have to be set. Background color is going to be my var color. Um, it was our neutral 800 in this case, because it was the one that was slightly more saturated, uh, is my background color. And everything else, there we go. We can see it's, it's all there, but we can't see it. So what I like doing with things like this is then just coming here and redefining my different things. We had our color heading is going to be a var color neutral 100 because it should be white 
the color body should be a var color neutral. I don't remember what number it was. We'll try that one. Let's see if that worked. Uh, no. <laughs> Did I not have a lighter version? We're going to have to see uh, if we have a lighter version we can use for the body. Uh, and then we also want a color of accent to be our var color yellow 400 now because uh, we are going to have to switch the accent color around when we have these inverted things. I thought that was the 200. Let's go, go and double check that. Color neutral 200. Oh, I know why it's not working. No, I don't. Do I? So I did have a 200 set up, but it doesn't want to work. Oh, I know why. Uh, this is one of the fun things with custom properties. Um, <laughs> inverted, invert, inverted, there it is. So this is one of the fun things with custom properties where um, the color of the text here uh, is actually being inherited because this is just paragraph text. The paragraphs never had a color set on them, so they're being inherited. They're inheriting the color body, but where they're inheriting the color body from, color body is set to this darker color. So it just means we need to be a little bit more explicit. So we do need to select our paragraphs that are inside of inverted and we can say that they have a var of color body. And of course this helps if you say that it's for the color. Uh, so there we go, that fixes that and they, they come in properly. And then uh, what we wanna do is be able to change this. So actually, first of all, let's make this 400. Uh, and we're gonna want a utility class here that we haven't used yet. So we're gonna do a, we'll just call it accent color where accent color will get a color of var color accent 400. So actually for now, I'm gonna turn this one off uh, just so we can see how this is gonna work. And we'll jump back on over to my index and we can add a class is going to be equal to uh, accent color. Hit save and we can see it's changed over to that orange color. And then if we jump back to my styles here where we have the inverted, we want to just redefine what that is. So anything that was using it is now getting the yellow instead. So that way it follows the design because we want the highlight color to be the same thing. And then the highlight of these to be the, uh, that color right there. Now, I think the next thing we want is like the separations that we have here. And obviously I have way too much content, but that's okay. Let's jump here back to my index. Um, and we have these as articles. I just realized these I did as articles, the other ones I did as a list. And I think here too, it also makes sense to have this as a list. Uh, so UL LI times three, and then I'll just move all of these in just so you don't, in, in case you didn't know in VS code, you can just drag and drop stuff. So I can just drag into my other LIs. Uh, if you ever forget to do something, it makes it a bit easy. And what I'm gonna do, we'll once again use the role is equal to a list here. So we get sort of the default styling removed. And then I'm gonna come here, just cause the style of this, where we have these underlines that are coming through here, I just think that it's something that could be used in a lot of different situations potentially. So I'm gonna give this one a class is going to be equal to a set separated, separated. I don't know how to spell separated, Separ separated list. Uh, because it makes sense to me for this to be something that could be reused in different situations where it will add underlines to things automatically. So for that, and to be able to get that to work, then we're gonna jump on over to back to my styles. And you'll notice I'm doing a lot in my global style sheet here as much as possible. Uh, and I'm keeping certain things with the components, but again, like, and again, I guess the separated list could be a component, uh, technically speaking, but if I'm just throwing a class on there and there's gonna be different stuff in there, um, I don't mind doing it this way. Anyway, there's different ways of working with this, I guess, but um, if it's something that's really going to be unique, then I'll take my header with the navigation there. It makes sense for me just to do a scope style, even though you could also bring it into here, but for something like the separated list where I might want to use it on an inverted background and I might want to use it somewhere else where it's not an inverted background, uh, it just makes sense for me to make this more of a reusable class than a specific component. Uh, so let's come here. We'll do it right here. Uh, our separate separated list. Hopefully it's spelt correctly. <laughs> and uh, what do we want to do? We want, we're going to select, basically we can do the same idea that we did with the flow selector. So we're selecting everything but the first one. So we could even say here, uh, star plus star to do it the same way, be consistent with how that's working. And just so you see, if I do this as like, let's just say background is red, 
uh, it's going to select the second one and the third one. It's not selecting the first one. So that's what the star plus star is doing. Um, so what we can do here instead is say that we have a content uh, ampersand before. And I know some people don't like like the readability <laughs> where we're running into here. I guess here we could even do the before uh, without nesting it. Because, it, yeah, let's do that. Maybe it'd be a l slightly more readable. You might want to put a comment here, uh, right? Add a separator between all items, something like that. Just what this is doing, because it looks a bit weird um, <laughs> what it looks like. And on this, eventually grid might be able to solve this actually, because grid decorations are on the roadmap for grid, but we don't have them yet. So uh, what we could do is a content is blank in this case. Width will be 100%, which I don't know if we need to bother setting. Height, uh, and I always say don't set things you don't need. And let's just say background is red uh, on these to see if they're even coming in. And I need to do a display block on that block. There we go. So we can see that they're coming in and then we can just do a margin block of, I don't know, it looks a bit smaller. No, it doesn't. What am I talking about? It looks pretty big. One rem, maybe even bigger, 1.5 rem. There we go. We get the separator coming in between them. Perfect, right? I think it is, uh, except obviously the color here isn't. <laughs> um, I'm just going to do my, we'll, we'll do a fun trick here uh, that you can do. So let's just say it's my var uh, color body for now. And I think that's going to be too white. If you look at the design, it's faded out a little bit more compared to the text. So another modern CSS thing we can do is say HSL from color body. And I'll put this on another line just so you can read it. Um, so from color body, and then you do H space A S space space L. So HSL, all those separate values. And then we can put in an opacity after a forward slash. So 0.5 you know, we'll just 0.25, maybe even something like that. So it's faded out. You can find the right number uh, that you need for that. So we're adding opacity to our color here, which is awesome. I love this so much. And if ever, just for fun, you could change other values here as well. Um, so you can do like a calc on the L um, or you can even say the, the lightness is now 100% or something and it would change the lightness of it. Um, but I just, I wanna keep the original H, S and L and just lower the opacity. Modern CSS is amazing. <laughs> uh, the only problem right now is these two things are stuck together. So for that, I'm gonna go and I think we're gonna jump back to my index. And here on the inverted, we'll also just add that flow class to add a little bit of spacing there. And actually now that I'm looking at that with the um, those were being too close on here, we could also add a class of flow to these as well, just to add the spacing um, into these elements. So all of those could get this. I'm doing these, uh, whoops. I'm doing these each as like an individual article. Uh, again, we're eventually gonna loop through and it's going to work here. So we don't need to, you know, you'll be doing all of this once, once we're doing this properly with the CMS data. All right, so now uh, there's a few other things. These actually would eventually be links. So I'm just gonna do it for the first one. Cause again, we're gonna loop through these, but I'm gonna bring an A on here with an href that's going nowhere for the moment. And I'm gonna do that same thing uh, for these guys down here. And let's just make this a lot shorter <laughs> for all of these, cause they're not supposed to be that long. Uh, save, there we go, looks a little bit better. Actually, we need some more spacing here as well now that I look at it and we need these to be links too. So let's go over to, it's right there my tab, popular articles. So we can drop a link in here uh, as well. It's going to be that last one, which is behind my head. So that's not practical. Uh, so let's just bring it on to this first one as well, just so it makes it easier for you to see. Um, and we'll tackle that. And in here, I think once again, we can just use a class is equal to flow, uh, for the spacing, except we don't want it on there. We want it right there, right? We want it on this div to add that spacing, but it's not going to add it for the pseudo element. So maybe instead of that, what we could actually do, let's say article div, okay. So article, we could say the div that's directly nested in there is going to be a display of grid with a gap of one rem. Oh, I know why that's not working. <laughs> um, right now we have this as an H3 before. I'm actually going to change that 
because the problem is then it's part of the content of the H3. So I'm going to take that off from there and we're going to bring it in here and make that a before. So it's going to look basically the same as what it looked like, but now it's a pseudo element on the div here. So it's coming, it's adding it here. The, uh, you know, the before is coming here, whereas before that it was going there. So I don't want the before here. I want the before there as part of the div. And that just makes adding the spacing a little bit better. And then we can actually probably use the flow class uh, instead <laughs> of this. And then because of that, we could probably boost this down to quite a lot smaller um, for our spacing. And I'm gonna go on that before. I need it to be higher up. And I think that's just coming because of the line height on here. So if I make that line height a one instead, I think it's gonna fix that problem. And then we play with our spacing a little bit there. That looks pretty good actually. Cool. Uh, so now is the links. So a little sidetrack there to get to this part. I'm gonna go up to where we had the heading styles because this is sort of integrated into there. I'm gonna do this. So here we have all of our headings. Uh, so I basically wanna say if we have, I'm gonna do this where uh, H1, H2, H3, H4. Uh, if ever we have a link that is directly the direct child of a heading, I'm gonna say that the color should actually be the current color, um, just so it matches. The text text decoration is going to be none. Now this is a little problematic because a link should look like a link. Uh, you shouldn't have to guess that you can click on it, but uh, I am following the design here. And then we can say our and hover and focus visible and the color will change to our var color accent. 400 and the cool thing with that is because we're redefining the 400 in different areas here it will be orange and here the first one will be the yellow color perfect so i think that looks pretty good everything's coming together we're going to do our navigation now and make that work so let's jump on over to the header uh, and i did mention we want a skip to main link so often you'll have that uh, most websites will have it you're on youtube right now you can find it on youtube uh, and it's a link that allows users to skip the navigation to get to the content. Because imagine you're on a screen reader or even Vim users like this as well. Anybody who does a lot of keyboard navigation on a site, you click read more, <laughs> you go to that page, and then the first thing you get after that is the navigation once again. You don't want the navigation, you wanna to skip to the content of the thing that you just clicked. So we can add that nice and easily here. We just do an A and we'll do skip to main. So the link here will go to our main content and we'll fix that in a second. We'll add an ID to all of our pages. And then here we'll write skip, uh, skip, to, or skip to main content. And that gives us a link that's right there. So let's select this. Our class is skip to main. Uh, I don't mind leaving that here instead of in the main style sheet because it's all uh, together. So skip to main and we want this to have a position absolute. So it's not part of the flow. Uh, and then you get to style this and have fun with it <laughs> and do what you want with it. Uh, so we definitely want it to have a background on there. So I'm going to give that a var of color accent 400. So it stands out a little bit, a color of var color neutral 900, a font weight of var font weight bold and some padding of maybe 1m 3m now because um i made the header a container the top it's actually is a top zero Ooh, we lose it there let's fix that or we're gonna we'll make that better in a second anyway um we could use some of our we'll do that now actually and uh i'm not gonna bother giving it a hover state actually uh actually we should just in case mm, i wasn't going to but we'll we'll give it both uh, so, and uh, hover and focus visible, I guess would make sense here. Focus visible. Let's just say that the background var color neutral 900 and a color of var color neutral 100. Just so we, there we go. Okay, good. And so I want to move it off screen right now. So I'm actually just going to do a translate of negative 200% probably, and it's gone. And then we just can come down here and say when it's in, we have a translate of zero. 
And so if I'm on my page and I hit tab, you can see right away it comes in. And I think what I'm actually going to do is uh, change these, this and this are going to come here. We don't really see it when it's off screen anyway. Uh, so let's try that again. Tab, there you go. Skip to main. Uh, and then we can, if you, once we set that up, it will actually skip to the main content. Um, but yeah, it's there. And if I hit tab again, I can go through my links as usual. But shift tab again, and we get back to my skip to main content. So that's perfect. And if you wanted to transition it or do something fancy with it, you definitely could. Um, but I'm going to leave mine like that. And that just means because we have this skip to main, if we go back to my primary layout, I want to make sure that this main has an ID of main content. So now if I get to my skip to main and I do that, it's skipped over this. And if I start hitting tab, let's do that again. If I'm here, I tab through and I'm tabbing through my navigation. If I skip to main content, and now I hit tab, you can see it's gone over to this read more button. So I've skipped over the navigation into my main content, which is exactly what we wanted. Cool. Now we just need to make a mobile navigation when we're at these smaller sizes. And interestingly for me anyway, uh, this is one of the few times I think it's wrong to do mobile first uh, for your CSS. I'm a big fan in general. Mobile first is usually the path of least resistance. So I say that that's the direction you should go in. But I do strongly believe that sometimes the path of least resistance is actually uh, doing a max width media query. So uh, just because if not, you're overwriting tons of stuff, <laughs> right? So these are my general styles. I want most of these styles here anyway. And then what we're going to do is come here and say at, ma uh, should we do media? We'll do a container again. Mm. This is one time I think a media actually makes more sense because it's based more on the viewport size. So if the width is less than, so this is the same as a max width media query. If the width is less than, let's say 750 pixels, I'm magic numbering that because media queries are always magic numbers. <laughs> no matter what you uh, want, they always are. And we're going to say our nav has a display of none to make it vanish away. <laughs> Uh, and the nice thing with that is it just means like when we get to our larger screen size, let's see if we can find it. There it is uh, here. So we're, we're going to leave that a bit bigger then uh, just so we can play with that. But here we get our, our normal navigation that's working. And then when we get to the smaller size, we're going to switch over to the other one instead of having to over like, I don't want to have a display of none that I have to overwrite into a display of block or flex or whatever else I need. I just want to add the styling I need to for the more complex situation, which is why I think this approach works better. Now, obviously in this case, I need a button that I can click on somewhere along the way here <laughs> to actually allow me to open and close my navigation. So we're going to come here and we're going to say we have a button and we're going to have a button. Uh, once again, in here, we're going to do a span uh, that has a class of uh, visually hidden so people know what this button is. You want to have content in your button, the same with like icon links and other things. Um, if you have them. So here we're just going to say uh, menu. So people know that it's, you know, this button is for the menu uh, if they're using an assistive technology. And then for this button, we're going to add a little bit of stuff. We're going to say that it has an area controls is equal to my, we'll call this uh, primary nav. And we're going to have an area expanded is equal to false. So what is all of this? This is saying area controls is my primary nav. So that means I have to say, this is going to open and close my primary nav. And area expanded false is because currently it's closed. We can't currently see it. And when I click on that button, we want to be able to see it. And there's my tiny little button uh, right there. <laughs> so actually for now, let's take off this visually hidden class just so we see a menu and we'll eventually change that for our hamburger. But right now we have that and we can get it to actually function. So this is the other nice thing that you can do uh, with uh, when you're using Astro is you can just, you know, within this file, either at the top or the bottom, wherever you want to add it for simplicity, just because we're working here, I think I'm going to add it to the top of my file, but usually I have it at the bottom uh, where you can just add a script tag and we're going to do our const of, we need our button. So let's call it uh, nav toggle is equal to our document.query selector. And in this case, it's just our button. 
but it, I think what we'll actually do is have it be our area controls instead of a button, just to be a bit more specific of exactly what this is. It's gonna be uh, something that has an area controls of primary nav and all of that will get wrapped in single quotations. There we go. So we have my button right now. Uh, that's gonna be my nav, my nav toggle. And then we can say nav toggle add event listener. You can probably guess it, you want it on click. And when we click on it, we want it to do something. What do we want it to do? So then uh, let's get the current state. So we can say uh, const current state is equal to our nav toggle get attri attribute. And the attribute we wanna get is our area expanded. If we do that, and let's just console log that, console log current state. So in my console, if we can find that, uh, oh, we're in our console, look at that. Uh, so in my console here, if I click on that, we should see a false coming up every time I click. So now what we can do is say, um, if nav opened is equal to false, false, you gotta spell it right. Uh, sadly, this is coming as a string. We could do other stuff, but I mean, it's it's clear enough and easy enough to do it this way. So if nav, if nav is not opened, basically, uh, we can then say that we want, we're just gonna steal this for a second. Uh, instead of getting the attribute, we're going to set our attribute of area expanded and we're gonna set it to true. And now if I hit save, when I click on my menu, it's gonna say false because it was false, but then the next time I click on it, you can see it's coming through as true because we've switched it over. Cool, so now that we've done that, we can also come in with an else here. So we're basically just toggling it between the two of them. So else, we wanna set it to false, false. Uh, and now, actually, let's do an inspect on here and we can see our button right there. Area expanded is equal to false and when I click, it's true, it's false, it's true, it's false. Awesome. So we're, we're now toggling that back and forth. <laughs> we'll probably let's open up my dev tools again just so it's a bit narrower, the space we're working in. And what we wanna do is, let's move this all and over. We can come back down to here and go all the way down to our CSS actually, where we have this setup. And we can say now that if our, if, uh, if we have an area expanded, is equal to true. Our nav, which is following it, so you can use our nav, which is following it, we can do the tilde, you can do a plus here as well, because our nav is coming directly after the button, uh, or if you had like a separation, this would work as well. But I'll, I guess we'll do plus, so it's directly following. Uh, we can then do a display, a block. So now, I think it was already on, so now if I click, it hides, it shows, hides, it shows. Nice. Uh, a couple of different things that we want is my button. We normally don't want it to be showing up. So here we can just say uh, button is display none. And then when we get into our media query, our button can become a display of block. If it's larger, our button disappears. When we get smaller, our button, let's just close our menu so it's more obvious. Here it looks like that. And then when we get to the, you know, we're switching between the two different states right there based on our screen size. So that's with our button there, that's good. The next thing we wanna do now is style our navigation when it's open, because it should look very different. So our button here, not only will it be display block, but it's gonna be a position, which probably means we don't need the display block on there, but we'll do a position of absolute with a high Z index on it. Uh, you could actually have one button to open things, another button to close things, but I just find this is gonna be a little bit easier. And we'll say left of zero, uh, not a left, a right to bring it back to the right side right there. Perfect. Uh, and then our nav itself, once it gets this display block, I think the easiest here is actually gonna be a position of absolute and an inset of zero. Let's just try that. Uh, you can see it's moved over a little bit. It's gonna have a background color that is our var color, color neutral 100, because it has the white background on it. And so it's there. Uh, actually, the inset of zero won't be as useful because of our container. So let's just say it has a height of 100. I'm gonna do a DVH. So uh, it's the dynamic viewport height. So if we had like the, the not the keyboard, but like the, the navigation thingies, the, the URL bar on a mobile device, it won't get in the way. 
Um, and then we'll do a top of zero. We'll probably have to play with this a little bit. And a right of zero. Let's just see. I think it's actually behind everything right now. So, so I, f I just was wondering why I wasn't seeing it because you can see here it is the height of it that actually is what I want it to be. Um, but I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my styles here and I'm actually going to take off <laughs> just because it's. I was going to work around this and make it a lot more complicated than it had to be. Um, the header footer here, I'm going to take off the container type. I think it makes sense having it for the main and the section. Uh, we'd have to have a lot of magic numbers if not for this to work. So I think this is going to solve some of the problems uh, that we could potentially run into. So what that means is I can actually do this as an inset of zero and we will need a Z index on here. So we'll just do a Z index of one. So when it opens, there we go, it's actually covering everything. So the inset zero is top, bottom, left, right of zero. And so instead of it when we had the container type on there, it would only be within that container. I want it to be for the whole screen because uh, that makes it a little bit easier. And then what we can just say is the width is 80% maybe. Um, and then we can do a margin left of auto just to push it to the right side. I can still see this stuff behind it. So we're also going to add in a box shadow here, box shadow of zero, zero, zero. And we'll just do HSL zero zero zero, so that's black over you know I always say over, but it's just with an opacity of like a point two. Uh, and here we're going to do a spread of a hundred V max, which just gives it a really big spread. So it sort of just separates itself a little bit from the background. Um, and the nice thing, like this, just ensures it's taking up an insane amount of space. But because it's a box shadow, it doesn't have any impact on the layout, so there's no overflow that can happen. Uh, so if we go back to the larger screens, everything's the same. We go to here, we now have the menu that's opening and closing. In this situation, we also want to come in and say that the UL here is going to be a display of grid, a gap of maybe three rem, it's quite a bit bigger. And the font size in here is bigger and the font size could go on the nav too. But let's just say that the font size is my var font size 600 maybe. Cool. And I'm just going to add a margin top of like 20 VH, uh, I think, just to push it down. And a margin left of, I don't know, 3 rem too, just to be consistent maybe with that gap. Uh, and let's go take a look at the design that we had because I was doing all of this uh, from memory <laughs> and it's not perfect. Uh, whoops, we have the two of them opened. It's not perfect. The color could be adjusted. The spacing's a little bit big maybe. Um, so I guess we could fix up those couple of things. The color that would be on the links then. The color of the links would be our var color neutral 900. And I said the gap was a bit too big. I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe it's like one thing bolder, but I don't think we really need it. Uh, we probably want a hover on there as well. So, and hover and focus visible. Uh, the color could go to a var color accent 400 is perfect. There we go. That's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. Uh, and then we can close our menu and make the screen bigger and we get back to how it was before. So we just need to fix this menu button and make it look a little bit better. And there's a couple of different ways we could actually do this. Um, what I'm going to do, just because I want to switch between the two images, uh, there's the easy and the hard way to do it, in my opinion. Uh, let's get it positioned properly, though, <laughs> uh, where the button, we have a position absolute. The right can just be one rem because that's what I had as my padding value there. Um, what we're going to do is let's bring that visually hidden back on to the span. So this would get a visual visually hidden, uh, right? And we need a class there on that class is equal to, so that hides. And you have two choices. You could have an image and you're actually like switching which image is visible, right? So say we did that, we just do image times two. So we have the two images coming in 
And again, I would leave the alts on these blank because the menu is providing the context here uh, as well as the area expanded. So the source for the first one would be uh, images and I think it's mm, icon menu.svg and that comes in and then this one would be our images uh, icon close.svg and it was icon menu close, not just close. There we go, we get the X. Um, so that's okay, except obviously we only wanna see one or the other. So let's just say this is class uh, icon open. Uh, let's just say icon hamburger actually, just <laughs> hamburger and then this would be uh, icon close just to be more clear about which one is which, because icon open could mean, is it to open the menu or is it that it's already open, <laughs> uh, right? And then so here we could say that our, I'm just looking through here. So in my regular button, we want to have the dot icon close has a display of none, so it's hidden. And then uh, in this case, this is actually on this element. Uh, I don't want to nest it there. So I was going to nest it inside, but the area expanded true is the element itself. This is our button. So when it's true, the icon close would be a display of block. So now when I click on it, it will show up and then hide. And the icon hamburger Hamber burger for somebody who likes hamburgers, I can't spell it, uh, gets a display of none. And that's not working. Speaking of spelling it wrong, I did spell it wrong here <laughs> as well. There we go. And then it switches between the two of them. Now the one problem is you can see the button's shape is sort of changing a little bit. Uh, it's not the end of the world because we're not gonna see that because in the final design, it's one or the other with no background on it. So if we go to where we declare our button here, we probably should give it a little bit of padding because you always want a bit of padding on these. So we can give it a bit of padding to make the clickable zone. And then the other thing we can do there is just say that it has a background of transparent and a border of zero. And like that, we get it working pretty good. Uh, you could definitely fancy this up, do a little bit more with it uh, to get that working, uh, you know, maybe do a transition even make the buttons do fancy stuff, all of that type of thing. But with that, we've basically finished everything I wanted to do for this stage of it. It took us a while to get here, but it was totally worth it because now we're gonna hook it all up to the CMS and see how easy that is to do. So for the CMS of this project, I'm gonna be using today's sponsor, Wix Studio, who has a headless CMS now. When you think of Wix, you might think of drag and drop editors, but the new Wix Studio has a lot more than that, including a whole bunch of headless options and different stuff you can use. And so for that, the first thing you'll have to do is head on over to Wix Studio, and you can just click the Start Creating to create an account. I already have one though, so I'm just gonna log in and I'll see you in just a second. Now, once you're logged in, you're gonna end up on a screen that looks something like this, where you have a nice Create New Site button right there that you can click on. And so we wanna click there and you should get the option for either a Wix headless or a Wix website. And in this case, we wanna create a headless. So I just click on that. You can see the CMS is built in. And if I wanna add some other stuff, I can do that, but we're just gonna focus on the CMS for today. Uh, let's call it FEM blog and hit create. Of course, you can call your project whatever you want and there's no problem there at all. Uh, but once we're here, you see that there was a technical issue on our end. Don't worry about that too much. Um, but we can see we have some different things here. And the first thing that we're going to do is go over to our menu on the side here. And one of the options is for the CMS. So we're going to click in there and we're going to create some collections. So create, well, we're going to create one collection. We could create more. You have the option of creating with AI, starting from scratch or importing a CSV. So we're gonna do create with AI just cause it's gonna populate some fields and stuff for us, uh, which is kind of handy. But if you wanna do everything from scratch, it's not a problem. We'll probably have to add some ourselves. So we'll just call this one uh, articles and some details about the collection. We'll just say uh, blog articles about technology. And we're gonna hit next. Um, the content that it will generate for these isn't always the best, but it should give us a good template for what we'll be uh, basing this on. So title, content, author, publish date, and a featured image. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna turn author off because we don't really seem to have one for this template, but this could be something where you add another collection and you could connect the author to the author you have here. Um, and there's the generate content here. 
So the generate content probably won't be tech articles. It just does random stuff, generally speaking. But uh, we'll click create co uh, collection and see what it gives us along with the generated content. And there we go. We have five articles that have come in, title, the content, the published date, and a featured image. And if I click on open on any of these, you sort of have the beginnings of what a blog post type of thing would look like. Uh, I'm gonna make a few change here, changes here though. So let's go back, uh, we'll, we'll cancel out of here for a second. First, my publish date, I actually want that to be earlier uh, just because for me it makes sense. So now when I open one of these, we see the it's the title, then I have my publish date that I wanna put, then I have the content uh, and then a featured image. Now the content that I have here, is, this isn't really content, right? This is more of like the description. So I think we can actually use that. Uh, we're actually, let's close this and we're gonna hit cancel. And let's edit that because it's not real content. We're gonna say edit that. And we're gonna call this one the description and hit uh, save or actually before we do that, we'll go to validations and we're gonna make that one uh, a required field. You can also limit character counts and a few other things there. So that's cool. Uh, we probably want them all to be, um, uh, a required field. So I'll do that really fast and I'll be back in a second. All right. So it was a second for me. It was instant for you. Uh, but those are all uh, required fields now. And I'm going to come and add a new one, which is going to be rich text. And we're going to choose that field. And this one is going to be the uh, body of our article. And once again, I think that one would make sense if it was a required field. And you, know, you can see that, well, there's a problem because they're, they're empty. <laughs> and so we need to add some content that's going to be in there. So I'm gonna do that really quickly. And once again, it'd be instant for you and I'll be right back with some actual content in my body here. And there we go, I have them all set up. So if I come and I open up uh, the travel uh, one I have here, you can see I have some H2s, we have some bold text coming in, we have the different heading levels and everything coming from here. So we're gonna be able to pull all of that in with the formatting uh, and it's gonna work really well. So let's hit cancel on that for now so I don't make any changes. And I'm gonna add one more field to here, which is going to be a Boolean because we need to have our featured articles. So let's choose that field type and I'm gonna to go to default value and choose false for that one. So we're getting it, but normally they won't be. And let's just say that that one that we just did is our featured article. So it's gonna pull that one in for the featured one, but we're also gonna see what happens if we have multiple featured articles because we always only wanna pull in one of them, obviously. So just like that, we have the featured article done. We have all of our content, I think, that we're going to need. And now we need to see how we're actually gonna connect this to our site. And it's surprisingly easy to do. And to do that, what we're gonna do is jump on over to our settings that is right here. And in the settings, if we look around in here, if you look down at the bottom, there's this advanced section where we can add some custom code, but what we want is these headless settings that are right here. So I'm gonna go into the headless settings, and this is what we want where it's create our first OAuth app. So we're gonna create one of these. So we click the create button. I'm just gonna call this one FEM blog and hit create app. Once that's done, you'll see something that looks like this, and there is a client ID that is showing up right here. So you can just click the copy button here to grab your client ID, and then we're basically ready to go on this end. So I'm gonna jump back over to the blog right here, and I'm gonna jump back over to the project, but we're gonna make this window a little bit bigger for these next few steps that we're going to be doing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open up the terminal again and push Control C to terminate the batch job. So yes, it's probably a, um, command C on a Mac, I'm guessing, uh, just because what we need to do is actually install two new things to get everything working with uh, Wix. And what that is is Wix's SDK as well as their data. Uh, and everything that's with the headless CMS is all under the data when you're looking in the docs, which we'll be looking at in a second. So I'm gonna do an NPM I, and it's gonna be at Wix slash SDK and an at Wix slash data and hit return on that so we can install both of those into our project. So with that done, we can close down our terminal. And this time I just wanna be in my root folder right here and I'm gonna do a .env file, which is for environment variables. What we wanna do is we can just bring in our Wix client ID and then inside quotation marks, you can put in your client ID right there. And that's just because to actually fetch all the articles and everything, we are going to need this and you sort of generally wanna hide these off in our env files. Uh, if you want to know more about how ENV files work and everything with them, you can check a link that will be in the description about them if you've never used one before. But basically it's just the way that we can sort of authorize Wix know is that it's us who's going in and grabbing the content that we want. Uh, so the next thing I'm gonna do now is inside my source file, I'm gonna make a new folder called lib, or actually I'll show you a, a faster way. If you know the file name and folder name you want uh, in VS Code, you can make a new file. 
I know I want it to be in a lib folder, so I'm gonna do lib, and then I'm gonna do forward slash, and I'm just gonna call it fetch articles.js. Uh, so we're gonna grab our articles from here. Now, generally speaking, if I needed to do more things with the Wix uh, client here, other than fetching the articles, if I was gonna be building in my own CMS E thing to publish the articles and I wanted someone to be able to log in, whatever, I needed to do more stuff with it, I'd probably split what we're gonna be doing here into two different files, just because we're gonna be creating the Wix client and then after that, we're gonna be fetching the articles. But in this situation, I think we can just keep it all in one place because it's the only time we're gonna need it. And just in case you do wanna follow along with this but you need the code or anything like that a lot of these steps are here from the wix docs uh, with their sdk docs here and for everything that has to do with the cms it's all going to be under this data section here so uh, if ever you need to like get something specific you'll be able to find it right here and if i go to introduction of the items i do believe it gets us started so you can see the wix data that we've already installed uh, right there now we need to do a little bit more than what it's showing us here, but everything I'm doing, uh, but a lot of these things I'm doing, I'm getting from here. So the first thing we're gonna do is in import, uh, we want the create client, and this is from just higher up in that uh, doc that I just showed, as well as our OAuth strategy. And we're both, we're gonna get both of those. Let's just close the sidebar so you can see everything I'm writing. And both of these are coming from the at Wix SDK. And then the next thing we want is to import our items from the at Wix data, which is why we had to install both of these uh, just a moment ago. So with both of those in place, the first thing we're gonna do is get the client. So this you'll be able to find in their documentation. The only thing that might look a little bit different is this import that we have right here, uh, just because this is using just because Astro is built on top of Vite, so anytime you have something as an ENV file, you do an import meta ENV and then the name of your file here. One thing that's important is this is uh, only gonna run server side. We're not really doing a server, it's all generated ahead of time. If ever you have something that does need to run client side, uh, it does need to have a public in front of it and that's also from your ENV file or it won't get exposed uh, on the client side, it only gets exposed on the server. And then the next thing we're gonna do is something that looks like this. Uh, so we're doing an export default async function. <laughs> Bit of a mouthful, but, uh, and we're fetching our articles. Uh, the reason this is being exported is because we're gonna be using this uh, in, in other files. So we're exporting it from this file to use in other ones. And then we're doing a let query where we're using this client that we've just created and we're going through the items and we're doing a query data items. So we're looking for anything with a data collection ID of articles. So this really depends on what your data collection ID was. And just in case, again, you're wondering where the, cure, the query data items is coming from, uh, it's all set up right here. So you can see uh, the example they have of it where we do need to use this find function as well, where it's actually without the find here at the end of it, uh, we're never gonna get it. We could do it like they have here where we're getting uh, querying the data items and then just having it be all of them. I don't wanna do it exactly like that though because I do wanna be able to attach some options in here as we get a little bit further in here because sometimes we might only want three items or one item or all the items or whatever. And this is just gonna give us everything right now, but that's fine. We're gonna start with this and sort of level up from there. So let's save that for now. And let's go on over for now just to our index. And while we're here, we'll also do an npm run dev before we do anything else and make sure everything is running smoothly. We should be able to open up our site once again. So let's shrink this back down. We'll close our terminal for now and we're gonna come all the way up to the top and we're gonna come here and actually I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Let's get that fetch. Uh, so it was import fetch articles uh, from our lib fetch articles right there. That's perfect. And this is working because it's the default function. So we don't need to uh, do any destructuring or anything like that. So we get our fetch articles coming in and why don't we do a console log of fetch articles. And when you do our, you gotta spell things right. Uh, when you do a console log in the front matter here, this is running on the server. So what that means is you're not gonna see it in the console of your browser, you're gonna see it over here. Now you can see this is actually an ASIC function. So what we're going to do is we're gonna say const articles is equal to await fetch articles. And then we can check what that's gonna be. So we can say our articles. 
And look at that, we have a whole bunch of information that just flew in because we're getting all the stuff from all of our articles. And let's just zoom out a little bit so it's not so gigantic uh, for a minute. And you can see our published dates and object and other things, but we have the ID of our article, the owner of it. Uh, we have the content that's coming in, the URL to the featured image. All of these things are coming, the title and different stuff like that. Huh. So that just makes our articles all of a sudden kind of interesting and what we can do with it. So let's say we come down all the way to the bottom here and still inside of our primary layout and we can do different stuff. So let's just say here, because that's my, my, all my articles are coming there. Let's say, uh, well, actually we'll do this. Let's say uh, const first article and we're going to, we're going to break this down a little bit. We're going to start keeping it really simple. Uh, first article is equal to articles and zero. We're just going to grab the first article from the array of articles there. And let's come all the way down here and let's just put in a div so we can, so we can actually see something uh, div and in that div, we got to close it and let's try putting our first article and hitting save and seeing what shows up on the page now where we get an object object. Okay. That's not very useful. Uh, so let's console log that console log first article and hit save once again. And now if we scroll all the way down here, we should just see the first one. And we see there's lots of like bits of information. The body is obviously taking up a lot of space here, which is kind of annoying, but that means we have access to all of these different things here to access any of those things. Cause it's all an object. We can just come here and just do something like title and the title is not going to work because we actually have to go into the data there. So article data, then title. And if we come take a look, the benefits of exercise is showing up. Cool. Right? So oh, maybe that's a heading H2 is our data title the benefits of exercise. And then we could come here and I don't know, first article data, and we can get in, I, I don't want the body right now because it's gonna sort of fill things up with a lot of things. Um, did I call it content? I thought we changed the name of that one, but let's throw in content there. <laughs> Maybe uh, I didn't change it, but there we go. We get some of our, our description coming in right there. So we see these different pieces of information that we can go and grab, and this can be really useful. So there's different ways we can actually go ahead and start using this, but just remember that we have all of our articles right now. And so sometimes we're going to want one article, like for our featured image. Other times we want three, maybe in other situations you need a different amount. And the easiest way to do this is to map through our articles to publish them or, you know, get them to actually be generated on the page. And when you map through, we could choose like, I'm going to map from one to three or there's some different options that we could pass through here to actually limit how many we're going to grab. So I think we're going to start there. Here, let's zoom in just to make it a bit bigger again. In my fetch articles here, I'm going to say count is equal to null. Um, we're going to be adding another option here after, but we're going to say that. And then we can say here, if count is not equal to null, that our query is actually equal to the query limit count. And what we're going to do is let's, so now everything should be working fine, but let's jump back to my index now and let's just do a console log here, console log of our articles dot length. So we can see how many articles are coming in. So if I scroll all the way down here, we can see that we have five articles. Cool. What if we come here now and I say three hit save. And now we're only pulling in three articles. So we can limit how many articles we're pulling in. Uh, in different situations, which can prove kind of useful uh, for the different things that we're going to want to do. The other thing that we might want to be able to check for is getting a featured article as well. So, and th this doesn't, uh, we're maybe overbuilding things a little bit in this situation. I just want to explore some of the stuff that's possible. Uh, so if we come back to here, what we could do is we have the count of null. I actually want to be able to pass a few different things in here, but I want to make everything a little bit easier to uh, do. So I'm going to put this inside of curly braces and then we're going to say is equal to some curly braces. So it just means that if we're not passing anything through, it counts it as nothing. Um, and it, it just makes this work. And after this, we're going to do a comma and we're going to say featured is equal to false. So that's our default. We're not getting featured articles and by default, our count is null. So, and let's just make this a bit bigger so you can see everything looks like that currently. And you could also um, put this onto multiple lines if you wanted to. So, you know, we could do this, but I think prettier might kick in and uh, turn off some of this formatting, but it makes it a little bit easier to read sometimes if it's like this. So then what we could do is we could also limit here as well. So we could say if 
featured because right now it's false, so it won't do use this. But if it is true, then we can do a query where the query is eq featured. And this eq just means like equals to. So when it does the query and it looks, is it going to find something that match has a match of featured? And of course we want that featured to be true because it will find featured on all of them. Is it true or false? Uh, and that's, uh, so it's querying, it's looking for the featured uh, thing we put. Let's open up the CMS again. Uh, so if we go back to our settings here, let's jump back into the CMS. So it's going to find our Boolean here. Oh, it, it's Boolean right now, so it's not gonna work for any of them. We should change the name of that one to featured before I make the mistake, featured, uh, save that one. Um, so it's gonna look for the featured, and if it finds anything that has a featured of true, it's going to make our query only equal to that one. So again, you could have it filtering for different things. If you had tags and other things like that, you could also use it. So it keeps updating our query to, you know, we could limit the amount we have, and we could say how many, and then we could say, is it featured or not? And then it's going to find anything that matches everything we've got up until this point, And then it's going to return all of the items that match it. So with that in place, why don't we go over and let's go back to our featured article here where we can actually have it pull in that featured article. So the first thing we're going to want to do is import our fetch articles, right? Cause we need, we're going to need that fetch articles right there. And then here, what we want to do next is do our uh, const featured article and we want to await our fetch articles and in this case we want when we await the fetch articles we want the count to be only one because we only want to get one featured article if multiple different ones are set to featured and we want to say that featured is true and with that done let's do a console log of our featured article and let's just do dot length because we ideally uh, length you got to spell it right um, we don't want to see the whole thing come up, but there we go. We see we only have one coming in. Whereas, let's just see if I put two here, is it going to work? Yeah, there we go. So we still only have one article coming in, which is perfect. So we can get rid of this, but we want to be able to use this now, right? So featured article is good, but then here, instead of this, we want to grab the title from here. So there's a few different ways we could do this. I don't find it that bad to come in and just say featured article dot data dot title and that should bring in the title except we're getting an error but let's see what this is i am getting an error on this so i do want to see what this is actually being caused from so let's bring back our console log but see what is actually getting consoled here um so we do seem to be having the right one coming in the traveling to exotic destinations is what's coming in and if we come up high enough that should be, oh, so here we can see that it's actually part of an array. And so because it's part of an array, it gets a little bit clunky here. Uh, there's a few different ways we could do it, but it wouldn't really, for this singular one, it really won't be that bad. Uh, so we could just say that this is our featured article dot, uh, or we wanna get the first item in the array, even though it's the only thing in the array. And then we could say data dot title. That should work now. So if we make this a bit smaller, there we go. And tra traveling to exotic destinations is the new title that we have coming in there. And then we could grab the content here would be our, uh, the same thing. So except here, I think it was content instead. There we go, that's coming in. So that's the description uh, is being called content. Uh, and then we have the URL. The URL, we do not have a page for it yet, but we're gonna set that up so we could actually click and go read the article. Now, if you don't like this idea of <laughs> having to write it like this every time, which I don't blame you if you don't, uh, what we could do is the featured article is gonna wait for that. And then we could say that the, uh, you know, article content is equal to our featured article zero dot data. And that just makes uh, everything a little bit easier. Uh, you gotta spell things right so you don't get errors. Let's take off this console log. And then here you could just put in your article content title that way. And then we could copy that and change that there. And we'll eventually do that for the link and the other things. And you can see that just brings everything into. So that might be a little bit more user-friendly uh, if you're using it to go through all the different things. So before we go through and do this for these other ones, I think the more important thing to do now is actually to generate the pages to bring in all of this stuff, because then we can get our links working and everything else, and then loop through to actually you know create what we need for each one of those uh, different things that are right there. So to be able to do that, we're gonna open up 
I'm gonna open up our sidebar and we're going to create a new file. So I'm gonna do this under my pages folder. So in the pages, I'm gonna create a new folder called article. And in that article, I'm gonna do a new one. And uh, we could call this slug or we could call it ID. Um, it really depends on what you wanna do for this. So I'm just gonna call mine slug.astro. And this is a special type of astro file when you put the square brackets around something to generate pages uh, based on what's here. And for this to work, actually, it just made me realize we're gonna come back to our articles collection. We could have it generate it based on like the title or something like that. But I think what we're going to do is actually add a new field in here first. So let's add a field and we'll just go with a regular text field for this. So, and the name of this field, and we have the ID in the name. Uh, let's call this, we'll call this one slug. And here uh, I'm just gonna put uh, no spaces for the extra help. And we're gonna click okay. Uh, actually, I just realized we also want to make this one a required field. Uh, and then we could just have, so this could be like benefits of exercise. And I won't make you sit through me doing all of these. So I'll see you in one second. All right, so all of those slugs are in place here. And I don't actually have to do anything. As soon as I add the field and it's there, I, I have access to it uh, over here in my code now. So in here, we're gonna to wanna to import two things. One of them, as you might have guessed, is your fetched articles. Don't forget your code fence at the top. I almost forgot. Uh, so import our fetch articles. And then the next one that we wanna get is our import for our primary layout. And that's because we're creating pages based on, it's gonna use the primary layout as the base of our page. But this time, instead of creating the page itself, what we're going to do is something, uh, this is an Astro feature that they have. So it's, we're gonna do an export async function and it's get static paths, which means we're gonna generate a static path for each one of these. And I just realized I'm outside of my code fence. I'm like, why isn't my syntax highlighting working? Uh, so we wanna do our get static paths here. And so, well, let's do our, we'll do a const of uh, articles is going to be equal await our fetch articles once again. So we have all of the articles that we want. And then we're gonna say that we're gonna return and we want to grab all of our articles and we're gonna map over them. And then inside the map here, we can put in, we'll say each individual article. We're gonna do an arrow function, but don't do an arrow function just with your curly braces here. We're actually gonna put in some, uh, the the round braces, parentheses, uh, and then our curly braces inside of that. And there's a couple of different things we're going to do here. The first one is going to be setting something called params. And the second thing we're going to be doing is our props. And the params is the really important one because the params is actually what's going to connect to this slug.astro. And like this slug here is gonna get turned into something. And so what is it gonna be? So in the params, we're gonna write slug here. So slug means it's going to take this that's in the square brackets and it's going to replace it for each page with something. What's it gonna replace it with? Well, it's gonna go to the article because we're, remember we're mapping through our articles. So for each article, it's gonna look at the data dot slug because we just added our slugs as one of the things here. So it's gonna find the slug. It gets that information, passes it into this, which is what's going to generate the file name for each one of the pages. So that's our slug right there. And then for the props, we're gonna say article data, and we're gonna say, I, and then we can say article dot data like that. It just makes life a little bit easier, just like we saw a little bit earlier on. And here we do need a comma in between those, which is why our syntax highlighting was very mad at us. Um, so yeah, just like before we were writing article dot data dot title. So we can just keep that within a single thing here uh, instead. Now this is coming as the props here, but to actually be able to use those props, what we wanna do now is say that our const article data is equal to our astro.props like that. So let's start trying to create a layout here. And we're gonna look at the layout in a second, but we're gonna say primary layout because we, you know, we already, we brought it in, so we should use it. And that's gonna be there. And for now, let's just do, uh, we'll start with an H1. We're gonna do a bit more, but let's start with, uh, yeah, just doing an H1. And let's say that we now have our article data and it's our title, right? Because we're grabbing the article data, our article dot data that we were using previously. We can just take it as this and then we're finding the title. So if I hit save on that and we come back to our site, 
I should be able to go to one of these. So the URL for it would be article. And the reason it's article is because in our pages, we have this article folder, and then it's going to be whatever the slug was. So if we come and take a look here in the articles, let's do our healthy eating or traveling to exotic paces. That's the one we've been looking at up until now. If we go to that page, we get it traveling to exotic destinations. <laughs> I put places, destinations, and just for fun, uh, if we try another one, let's try exploring nature. So I can take this off and put exploring nature and exploring it. You can see the title for each one of those is coming. We're generating the page for it, which is super cool. Uh, so we're off to a good start, right? I think we're off to a pretty good start. So ideally here, so we have our H1 coming in. Uh, what else would we want here? Well, we want the featured image, I think, right? <laughs> so we can come here and we can just say our, uh, we can come in, yeah, with an image of say featured image. And so then we can say our article data dot featured image, which I think is what we called it. We'll see if that uh, pulls in. Ah, there we go. Our image came in. It looked kind of heavy. Uh, yeah, they're a little bit too big, um, but at least it's coming in. Awesome. So we have that coming in as well. And then we can just bring in more content. Now, there is one small thing uh, of the hard thing is like how, let's just put a div here. And inside that div, let's try doing our article data dot content. And of course we wanna wrap that all in these and we're gonna see this is a bit of a mess. Uh, or it's not content in this case, I do apologize. Uh, it would be our body, right? That's what we called it. And if we look at our body, it's bringing it all in, but it's like paragraph, break, paragraph, uh, H2 is here, we, have, we, we see the HTML. <laughs> and that's when we have the rich text fields like I used here, like this, it's actually exporting it basically as HTML. So it's, you know, paragraphs or headings or strongs or bolds, all of those are coming, our lists, uh, and all of these different things are just coming through like that. Normally that could be like, oh no, how could I handle that? That's kind of annoying. Luckily for us, there's an actually really easy way to handle this with Astro. So I'm gonna remove this from here. And then in the div here, I'm gonna set, set HTML is equal to, and we're gonna put that as our set of our HTML for that div. And then this can actually be self-closing uh, just like that. And we're gonna hit save. And now it's gonna bring it through as HTML content. And the spacing's not very good. So on that div, we can also, and it doesn't have to be a div, but I think it makes sense in this case. It just wraps that in a div. It's not the end of the world. And we can add a class of flow on here to give it some regular uh, flowy content with some proper spacing on it. And holy moly, we have an article coming through. It's also not taking up the full width because of the max widths that we put on things as well. So I think that's actually kind of cool, right? And you might actually want to come in here and add like another class around this just to encapsulate it. Um, or you know, an article or whatever, just to sort of add some extra classes here. Maybe you wanna change the max width. There's different options that you definitely have to style this a little bit better. But for now, if we go back to our homepage, we wanna make all of these links work, or we wanna generate the correct pages for all of these and then make sure all of the links work. So let's start by doing uh, these ones on the side because we don't need the images. So it'll go a little bit faster, I think. So that I believe was still on our index page. And in there, right now, yeah, we have the separated list that's right here. So I'm actually going to come through on this separated list and delete, uh, let's actually, <laughs> let's leave it for a second, just so I have, I'm gonna delete all of them except for one, um, just so I can remember <laughs> how we set it up. But in this separated list, what I'm gonna do is write a little bit of JavaScript to loop through the different things that we wanna get here. So this is our new articles. So what we should do is here, we could say that our const new articles is going to be equal to await fetch articles. Actually, <laughs> I just realized we want exactly this right here. Uh, fetch articles and the count three, that's gonna be fine for the moment. We'll call this one uh, new articles, just so we're getting the newest ones. And I think it's automatically gonna get the newest ones when we do this. And then we can come down to over here where what we're gonna do is say that our new articles, and very similar to what we did before, we map over. So we say our article, and then we do our arrow function. We do some uh, round braces uh, or parentheses, I guess I should say. And then in there, we can just basically take what we have here and put it inside of that map but then in all of these spots, let's just push all this over a little bit. Uh, here, instead of this, we want this to be our article.data.title. Uh, 
And if I hit save, we should see the benefits of exercise have come through. Awesome. And then we can come here and we can, on that paragraph, it's going to become our article dot data dot uh, content in this case, mostly because I misnamed that when I created it. Uh, but now we can see the different content coming through, which is a little bit long. <laughs> uh, so we could potentially limit uh, how much is coming through on each one of those, but I'll leave it like this for the time being. And we'll look at potentially how we could uh, do a little update there on the CSS uh, in a minute, but at least those are all coming through and you can see they're all links because it's following exactly what we have here. But of course we want it to link to the correct page. So for that, it's actually kind of easy. We're gonna put in our curly braces here and then some back ticks because we know the path is always gonna be the article and then the name, like the, the slug of the article. So we can do that. And then here we just need to put in our dollar sign and then more curly braces. And we just do article dot data dot slug. Hit save. And now all of these links should actually work. If I click on that, look at that. It brings me to that article. I click on that one, brings me to that article. Click on that one, brings me to that article. It's fantastic. I have a problem with my uh, featured image on that one, but that's okay. We can dive in and fix that one a little bit later, but at least it's bringing us to the page and then we can make any updates or changes we need on the individual page a little bit later on. I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's pretty cool. That means we have this one too. So let's jump on over to our featured article. And over here where we have our read more, we could do the same thing. So we get rid of those, we back ticks, we do our, uh, our RT, we know it's article, and then it's going to be our dollar sign. And then it's going to be article content dot slug in this case, just cause we changed the, how we're referencing it. And now if I do that, I click here, traveling to exotic destinations is working. Cool, right? I think that's pretty neat. Uh, so that's also working. Before we get down to this bottom one, let's, <laughs> this is bugging me more than I thought it would. So what we can do for that, let's jump to our CSS. Uh, hmm. I, uh, I'm just trying to think, okay, I'm gonna, maybe this is where like a different type of component could be useful, but let's just jump. Yeah, we'll go to our CSS. And that was with our, we called that a separated list. So we could say, <laughs> I'm just gonna grab my paragraphs that are in my separated list and I'm gonna paste this in. <laughs> and I'm gonna hit save and you can see it works. Uh, <laughs> this is a really annoying thing to have to do where you have an over text overflow of ellipsis to get your ellipsis. You need the overflow of hidden to hide the extra text. And then it's a display of a WebKit box, which is an old Flexbox thing, a WebKit line clamp of three and a WebKit box oriented orient of vertical. So the, the, this and this are the old original like pre flexbox flexbox things. And then the line clamp works. This is in the spec, just a line clamp of three. This is in the spec by itself. It should work. Currently it doesn't. You need all of this to do it. Uh, and this will work in all browsers, even if it's the, the WebKit ones here, they've all made sure it works. So we can do it like that. I think we'll get away with that. Um, or you know what we're going to do actually, we're going to change this. Let's call this truncate truncate text and we're going to make it a little fancier because I actually want to use it down here as well. So uh, we'll bring that on its own as a little one, but we're going to do this of uh, line clamp or we'll call it max line, max lines of three. And then here and here we can do a var uh, max lines, or we could even drop this from here actually. And for both of these, just have that as the fallback. And then we can jump back on over and I'll, sh yeah, I think this actually make more sense. Uh, so it's back on our index. And so for each one of these paragraphs, we can do a class is equal to truncate. And that should work. Uh, I did truncate text probably because my autocomplete came in. There we go. Truncate will be perfect. Um, so yeah, that's looking better. And then we can do the same thing for that other one. So that was our uh, top or popular articles, right? Popular articles. So we can do much of the same thing here. We'll keep one of those just for the formatting of it, but we'll remove those two for now. We'll come here. We'll get a const of popular of our articles is going to be equal to await fetch articles. Of course, fetch articles we don't have. We have to import it, fetch articles. There we go, awesome. And then here we do the same map that we had before. So I'll do it pretty fast. We'll just say articles dot map. And then for each article, we want to 
map over them and output some stuff. So that's why we're using our round braces instead of, it's not like a function that's running in here. Um, and then we can grab this whole list item, drop it inside of there, and then we can just update this. So this was our uh, article dot data dot uh, featured image, which has managed to break my layout. And I'm curious why this image doesn't want to work. I don't know what I did wrong there. Uh, we'll find out eventually though. For here, once again, a lot of this is the same, so we'll do it pretty quickly. Uh, article forward slash slug, uh, whoops, no, article dot data dot slug. So just to double check, that should make the links work. They seem to be working. I have too many articles coming through because we didn't limit how many we had. Uh, that's okay, we can fix that after. This would be my uh, article.data.title. And then this one would be my article.data.content. And then here we can do a class is equal to truncate again, truncate. But this time I'm gonna do style is equal to max lines two. And now you can see each one only gives us two lines of text. Cool, right? I think so. Uh, I'm gonna do a few little quick fixing up of the styles here. Uh, so let's just do here, we can do our count is equal to two. So it brings uh, two, we want three of them, not two of them. Uh, so there we go, we have three different articles coming in. And let's go fix the image here. <laughs> so the article is good. The div here is good. We're just gonna come here and say the image has a width of 100%, a height of 100%, and an object fit cover. And I think that will fix them and get them filling up the appropriate amount of space, which is good. Uh, I don't know why this isn't coming in. Another field I probably should have added for the images is the uh, one for alt text for my images as well, just so we could bring that in. To traveling to exotic destinations. Let's go see what's wrong with that one. Uh, cancel. Open. Oh, I'm not sure why that image isn't working. I'm wondering if it's actually, for this one's the only one I grabbed it from um, uh, Onsplash instead, and I'm wondering if it's because I grabbed it from Onsplash that it's not working. It is a possibility. <laughs> I guess I should just use my own images. I have a feeling it's that. Uh, so we could upload an image for that one if we wanted to, but check that out. It's working, I think it's pretty cool. We have the whole site hooked up and, and working with a CMS right now, all the content coming in, uh, pages being generated for these. These pages definitely could use some improvement, but I don't want you to make a project just like I'm making. I want you to do a bit of your own thing and push things more than what I've done here. So I'd encourage you to fix the styling of these individual pages a little bit, maybe center the content, play with the font sizes a little bit, make them look a little bit prettier, uh, set a max size for the featured images things like that, then you could even do like a new, a popular, a trending, um, and things like that. Uh, for example, <laughs> for these popular ones, we don't really have a way to do it yet. So just as a bit of a hint, um, for that I'd probably actually use some tags to pull in specific articles there, and it wouldn't be hard to do. Uh, all we need to do at that point is in our fetch articles, we could add another thing here where we could say that uh, tags is equal to, and it could be a blank array as a default. And then here where we have this, uh, we could just have uh, if uh, tags.length is, is greater than zero. Uh, so we actually have some tags. Um, I'm getting a syntax error, I just need a comma there. Uh, yeah, so if the length is greater than zero, then we could update our query where it's only getting things that have that tag. And for that, we would use our in there. And once again, uh, to do that, I'm just checking out the different options and different things that we have when we're querying our items and getting everything from the Wix documentation that is right here. And um, yeah, so for links for all of that are in the description if you wanna play around with it some more and try doing some different things, adding more articles, playing around with it and seeing what else you can do because pushing the limits of your projects and doing more with them than what the defaults are is always going to be a good thing and help you learn a lot more along the way and also to show off a lot more of your skills too than having just the same project that everyone else does.
So with that, I really hope that you enjoyed this video very much. And I'd like to also thank my enablers of awesome, Andrew, Philip, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons and channel members for their monthly support. And we yeah, have, thank you so much for listening. I really hope you enjoyed this. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.